at the size of that bat. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good Saturday morning to you. Guess what? We are fishing in South Carolina on this day, the Bassmaster College Classic Bracket Competition presented by Lou's live for you. For the next four hours here on FS1, we have eight college anglers who have qualified for a chance, for a chance to fish in this bracketed competition for a place on the biggest stage in all of fishing, the Bassmaster Classic 2023. Tommy Sanders here with Mike Sukon, and you can fill us out on the rules of the game. Here's a little bit different, Mike. Oh, you know, we're, we're down to our final eight anglers. The one on Monday we're going to crown gets to go to the Bassmaster Classic. We have uh, bracket style fishing today, head to head. We got eight anglers going to go number one seed versus number eight. The winners move on to tomorrow. The championship will be Monday. Best five fish, catch, weigh, and release. You win and you move on. There you go. We also get entry into the Bassmaster Open Series, use of a boat and a truck. We'll uh, fill you in on the, the specific specifics of that later on today. But uh, look at the weather here. After all that's happened here in the Southeast United States and after Hurricane Ian, uh, man, our hearts go out to everyone still suffering from the, the wrath of that. But everything is cleared out here. We are going to be fishing all day long up until 3 o'clock local time in our first round. Four matches today and welcome now our special guest. What a thrill it is to have our progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. His second such title, Brandon Polnick. Brandon, can't tell you how much it means for, for us to have you here, how much it means yeah. to these kids to have you here as I, well. I mean, it's awesome. When I got the invite, I couldn't pass it up. To to be able to watch these kids, and I call them kids, they're not that much younger than me. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not that old yet. But That's I've been right. doing it long enough that I can call them kids. Um, and it it's pretty cool to watch like how good they are um, at, at such a young age. And some of these guys haven't been fishing that long but that learning curve is so short now to be able to watch them. Uh, you know, it, it won't be long before you look at the list of names, you know, some of these guys that are in the top eight, they're gonna be on the elites. It, we've already seen it, the college program, you got guys like Whitaker and Cody Huff and Jacob Faust and like, there's lots of guys that come out of the college oh, ranks yeah. that are now on the elites and they're not just there, they're Oh, they're yeah. doing well. They're doing very, very well. Such, uh, you, you know, we talk about what's at stake here, the trip to the Classic and everything like that. Um, these guys have a remarkable opportunity here. We can't stress enough how important that is, a chance at the World Championship. This is the Dream Maker Weekend. These guys, college, can you imagine when you were in college age, being able to fish and get a berth to the Bassmaster Classic? These guys get that. This will be the 12th angler from our college series to make it into the world's biggest uh, fishing tournament. Well, let's take a look at our four matches going on today. We have eight qualifiers, including our team of the year and the top three finishing teams from the national championship, which also took place here in South Carolina. And you can see the breakdown right there. Today, it's going to be uh, Louis Minetti of UNC Charlotte taking on Trey Schroeder of M McKendree University. Mike Michael Figaro of UNC Charlotte taking on Tyler Christie, also of McKendree University. Andrew Vereen from Coastal Carolina going up against Seth Slanker from Florida Gateway College. Connor Cartmel of Coastal Carolina, our national champions, in fact, Coastal Carolina, going up against Jackson Swisher, Florida Gateway. So we'll have those four matches today. We'll have four winners and two matches tomorrow. And a final match, two anglers head-to-head -head on Monday, Championship Monday, to uh, decide who goes to the Bassmaster Classic 2023. So a lot of exciting fishing going on this weekend right here on FS1. And we invite you to stick along, stick around with us. Let's take a look at this lake here. This is Lake Greenwood. If you drew a triangle from uh, Augusta, Georgia over to Columbia, South Carolina, up to Greenville, South Carolina, Lake Greenwood would be right about in the middle there. And Brandon, it's about 20 miles long. Not a big no. lake, but big no. enough for our purposes here. Yeah, I mean, it's plenty big enough for these guys to get spread out. And you take a look at the map there. You can see they're kind of spread out throughout the lake. And the, the big question this week has been, like, what is the weather going to do, right? Those guys that are fishing further up the lake, is that runoff and the rain going to cause issues for these guys? Um, you know, and it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, you know, and I'm really curious to see how they adjust and move throughout the next couple days. Absolutely, and we look at that the way it's populated right now on the lake. Those two upper arms, the Reedy River and the Saluda River, kind of being left alone, right? As you would expect, yeah. there'd be a lot of uh, a lot of trouble from water inflowing from the watershed here. Let's take it right out now, and we're looking at Trey Schroeder. Trey Schroeder in his match with Louis Minetti from UNC Charlotte. Trey Schroeder from McKendree University, who has been here before. He's got a great history here. 
Um, it's been a little slow. Practice, we had a bunch of wind on all these points, and I think that helped keep a lot of the fish on the bottom. I've seen a lot of fish. A lot of them are suspended, though. And I'm not really getting any bites. I haven't got a bite yet, actually. Uh, really hoping to just... Once you get on these fish out here, they, they get going quick. Once you can catch them. Problem, the trick is catching them. <laughs> Schroeder, as we mentioned, in his matchup with UNC Charlotte's Lewis Manetti. News okay. Lewis. Tell me when. All right, guys. Well, we got three. Um, it's been not a fast and furious start. Well, I guess it was a fast and furious start. Found a little place um, early this morning that I had not found in practice, and they were there and they were biting. Caught two nice. Well, I don't really know what a nice one's going to be this week, but. Caught two better than average um, size fish. First thing right off the bat, um, kind of ran a couple buzz bait places that did not pan out. And now we're out here dragging. Um, got one pound and a quarter, pound and a half -er, um, out here. I think there's enough fish to catch a limit here. You only need two more um, just to kind of calm my nerves and get a start on the right track. But some point today, we're definitely going to need to hit the bank or run some brush piles or something, try and get a better bite. But I definitely don't hate that I got some fish in the box. Um, you know, I don't know how this day and week's gonna really turn out, but um, this time of the year, it's kind of just good to have some fish in the box and kind of happy to have that right now. So that's what we got. Well put there by Lewis Minetti, part of our team of the year, who actually Over. turned out to be our top two qualifiers. Yep, we got a hook up here. Little guy. He might go 12. There's got to be 12 inches of spotted bass and largemouth. Verify the length and the weight. You can, you can see he's got the original yeah, spot lock right. out there, too. <laughs> he's got That's his marker buoy. Right there. I love that. You're right here. That is not what we're looking for, but we'll take them right now. Yeah. There's you a story know, out there. That people how we're staying on our spot. <laughs> yeah. They won angle of the year in the 1996 the Ranger. Yeah, there's your spot. I mean. Spot lock. I love it. Yeah. 14 ounces. <laughs> Sounds about right to me. <laughs> a little 14 ouncer. How about that? This guy I saw use one of those, I think it was Mark Menendez. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I was saying, Wasn't that long four in a box now, but no. not the size we're looking for. <laughs> Could really use a two pounder off here and then might stay a little longer. Um, just because I think there's a little bit better quality here, but maybe not. Got a couple more rock piles and brush piles we could hit. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that here in a little bit. But in the meantime, see if we can't get number five in the box. I think it's awesome that they they don't let the lack of their boat or technology or anything affect the way that they fish. Like obviously, he's he's catching them this morning. Um, he's leading his head-to-head -head match. The cast that they're sitting on, and, you know, and a little he's, bit off end. This morning. It's just a big he's just rock fishing. point, kind of underwater, main lake pocket. You know, pretty high percentage place for little spots like this. The biggest thing with, that I've learned with all the new technology we have is that if you don't have the foundation and the fundamentals, that good base of just figuring out seasonal movements and catching fish, those electronics don't do you any good. If you don't know where to go apply that technology, it's useless. And so, uh, you know, there's a point where that it can actually put you 
behind if you're trying to rely on that technology too much, even though it does help. So this morning I pulled up on that rock bank right out there in the distance because it was the first spot I pulled up in practice and they're on it they're on it pretty heavy in practice and it seemed like they're still on it pretty heavy. I missed a few bites on it this morning but was able to catch two smaller spots so then I came back up in here because I caught a few bigger largemouth here in practice so I was trying to see if I could replicate it but it's not going not going too great at the moment but I think after this pocket I'm gonna head back to that rock wall and try to break out some tricks see if we can't catch three more just to get a limit and then I'll go up shallow the rest of the day and look for a big one. It's Michael Fugaro the other half of our team of the year along with Louis Manetti. He's got some experience on the Saluda River one lake down on Lake Murray grew up fishing there which I don't know if that'll help him knowing the waters Brandon. I you mean think? it's not gonna hurt anytime you get in kind of that South Carolina region, a lot of those bodies of water will start to fish similar. And you hear these guys talking about going and getting a limit and then going shallow and searching for a big largemouth. And it, it seems like that's what it's gonna take on Greenwood, right? Is it's that one or two bites that's gonna separate you. Michael going up against Tyler Christie from McKendree University. Tyler. Uh... Not his first trip to the college bracket competition. Was here awesome. in 2019. Sounds good. Christy has 212, two fish, two and three quarter pounds. He's half a pound ahead of Figaro right now. Well, um, started out this morning. Got two in the boat so far. We started shallow. It's been overcast. We got some rain last night. Um, starting to see some bait kind of push back into these creeks. Um, just got two little ones right now. We're looking for three more, but uh, we're going back into this creek now. It's real shallow through here. This bridge has a nice little ditch right in front of it. Um, I caught a keeper here on Thursday, so hoping we can pull up and get a few more bites. I'm seeing some fish activity up there, some bait, but we'll see. Tyler from McKendree University. Pretty big footprint in college bass fish, fish in the last five or six years or so. The oldest university in the state of Illinois, believe it or not, in the St. Louis area. I've actually met a lot, a lot of those kids. There's a, a show in Collinsville, Illinois, that uh -huh. I, I've worked often, and uh, McKendry's there a lot of times. You see the green the, and yellow from McKendry. Yeah, a lot of them will come around there, and so it's it's neat to see. I mean, they've. That's a name that you see at the top of the leaderboard often. Mm -hmm. There's Connor Cartmel going up against Jackson Swisher, Florida Gateway. Connor part of our national championship mm -hmm. team, Connor Cartmel, Coastal Carolina. Sorry, McKendry's purple, the Bearcats. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so start off the morning at one spot. I think we caught four keepers there, three or four keepers there. And then we just pulled into this creek and we caught two more that cold. Well, we caught three, cold two. Let's see if I can get us out of here without breaking anything. It's interesting to see how I mean, you look, he's way in the back of that pocket or that little drain, and it's not dirty at all. The dirty water you see is from his trolling motor. Wow. So that tells me that the rain that they got there didn't really have that much effect, at least not, not on the part of the lake that he's on. You would think that if they got any crazy amount of rain that that water would have been dirtied up from that drain that's running in there. Now we're looking, they only may have got about a half an inch of rain in that region. But it could be more upstream, so it may be coming still. Yeah, and the, the main river body could be a lot dirtier, but I, I was really thinking that some of those smaller 
you know, backwaters and creeks would have had more fresh water pushing into them, but it doesn't appear to have had much effect. Connor Cartmel right there, Coastal Carolina in the lead in his match against Jackson Swisher right there. You can see that at the bottom left there, one of our four matches going on, Louis Manetti. UNC Charlotte leading Trey Schroeder. Trey Schroeder still looking for his first keeper, according to Bass Track. Michael Figaro and uh, Tyler Christie. Very tight match right there with Christie at the edge as it stands right now. And Andrew Vereen trailing Seth Slanker, Florida Gateway University in match number four. We'll be back after this. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood brought to you live by Luz is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Hey there anglers, I'm Fox Weather's Craig Herrera and this is the Bassmaster College Bracket Championship and we're looking at weather on Lake Greenwood in South Carolina as we go through the weekend. Today a whole lot of cloud cover, right about 70 degrees or so for our anglers. We do have a small chance for some rain. Meantime, on Sunday, the weather looking a little nicer and there is some more sun in the forecast, more sun than clouds in fact. We're going for 72 for a high. We are gonna have a pretty stiff breeze though. That might make it a little harder for our anglers to cast out their lines exactly where they want, hoping to catch something good. Hey, good luck to all of you out there. Hope you catch some hogs. Hey, remember, you can also download the Fox Weather app or stream Fox Weather from your favorite connected TV device. Fox Weather been, uh, yeah, they've been working overtime for the past four days, that is for sure. We appreciate all the great coverage, and as we say, we're still thinking about all those folks affected by Hurricane Ian, but look at the weather here today. It's hard to believe that just yesterday it was passing through this area here, but we've got good weather, generally good conditions here. Might get some wind later for you, Craig, and we'll look out for that, but uh, here on Lake Greenwood, we are out, and we've been fishing since uh, 7 o'clock local time, 7 Eastern today. Our four matches going on, one of them, Seth Slanker. Seth Slanker from Florida Gateway College going up against uh, one of our national champions, Andrew Vereen from Coastal Carolina. That head to head adds such a, just a different dynamic to it. You don't get to do that. No, I, we don't. And it, I, I was sitting here thinking like, how would I approach that? You know, would you change the way you fish or would you do anything yeah. different? But you don't know what you, your, the other guy has. And so you're, you have to, there's a lot of strategy in play there, you know? And I think the biggest thing is understanding kind of what the lake is capable of so that you get a good base of where you're sitting against guys. But the thing is, is you could beat, you know, six of the other anglers, but there's one guy right. that you're head to head <laughs> yes. again that ends up beating you. And, um, you know, that can definitely change things a lot. Um, and so far we see a lot of guys messing with top water and stuff. First thing in the morning, uh, I, I actually think the fishing's probably going to get better throughout the day as the weather kind of starts to stabilize and settle a little bit after the hurricane passing through. Uh, you know, a lot of these fish are going to be bait fish oriented this time of year in the fall. Mm -hmm. They're going to want to be chasing bait. And a lot of times those, the best times is when those blueback and stuff get up high in the water column. Well, they don't tend to like to sit right on the surface when there's thunder, lightning, and a bunch of rain and wind on them. So be curious to see how it starts to shape up as the afternoon comes into play. Yeah, Thursday they had a practice day. They all got to go out on the water. Yesterday they got to the uh, launch there at the Greenwood State Park. It was too windy to go, so we canceled that day, and they seeded based on their angler of the year and their finish at the Strike King National Championship. Yeah. So it'll be a little bit different than what they saw Thursday afternoon when they left. Oh, definitely different. A um, half, a half inch of rain. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, there's enough rain that it could affect some places. 
so far it doesn't look like it's affected the lake too much um, as far as water clarity and things like that go I mean, that's pretty good conditions to be throwing top water mm. Here's Andrew Vereen, who was Seth's opponent in this first match here. Andrew. For uh, morning's been kind of slow. We got one for only a pound. Missed a good one, but, uh, you know, just still trying to get one big bite to anchor a bag if we can fill a limit a little bit later in the day. So, one bite's all we're hunting for for right now. Uh, I want to say it's about 10, 11 o'clock. I'm going to go hit a brush pile that I got that I caught some fish off of and, and go crank some rock that I got a little bit down the lake. Just try to put together a limit, a decent limit at that. So it sounds like to me he's, he's searching for that one big bite first mm -hmm. where some of the other anglers are trying to catch their limit and then they're going to go... Um, so I'm curious if he thinks that his odds are better in the morning. For the get, big fish. Of getting uh, that big large yeah, should bite. have a little homework assignment to break down this lake and, uh, and give us an idea how you would fish it. I, I would probably search for a place where I could catch a limit early and quick and kind of settle you down. Like, because the big thing that's going to separate the guys here is that one or two big largemouth bites. You know, you've got a ton of spots, and generally when you have a lake that is full of spots, you have a lot of the same size fish, a lot of similar size bags, and those are gonna be your limit fillers, and then those largemouth bites are gonna be the ones that separate the guys. And uh, typically from what I've seen is those singled out individual largemouth fish are easier to catch in the afternoons, um, I feel like. I've had a okay morning. Um, it was a little bit slower. I've had a handful of top water bites, but only three of them has com really committed to it. But um, I'm gonna keep sticking out with a top water for a little bit longer. Hopefully, you know, at least catch one good one. I've caught, you know, three small ones, but we'll see how it goes. Just trying to bounce around from dock to dock on this top water. Cause that's how all my better bites came in practice. As of right now, I'm just fishing for a big one for the first you know, few hours, and then I'll deal with the rest later on, but. Okay. Jackson Swisher in that match with Connor Cartmel. It's uh, Andrew Vereen, we just saw him. He's, uh, he's his uh, partner in the national championship team from Coastal Carolina, Jackson. <laughs> Jackson, you, you talk about the experience. These, this guy almost won. On, yeah. uh, an open on Lake Douglas. <laughs> he almost made his way to the classic through the opens. Yeah. That's the kind of experience we're dealing with here. Yeah, and they're not, they don't come into these events not knowing what they're doing. No. You know, they, they make it here against a, some pretty stiff competition. And that's why you see so many guys come through the college ranks and then into the elites. The fact that, you know, they can make it to the Bassmaster Classic, like the biggest event in our sport through this. But then not only that, they're also getting an opportunity to live out their dreams by getting paid entry into the Opens. Right? And then, then they can qualify for the elites, you know, because for a lot of these guys, that's their end goal. They have, oh, yeah. you know, they're going to school for a degree. <laughs> But they want to fish on the oh, elite series. We see so many names in our college competitions who are fishing the opens, who are making the elite series. Oh, 100%. And yeah. so to be able to get a head start and get entries paid into that makes a huge difference, especially when you're a college kid. Looks like Cartmel's hooked up. Connor Cartmel, who's Culling already here. Let's see if this one makes the cut. Might do it. One thing I've noticed, look, watching him fish this morning. What's the smallest fish? You don't see very many guys throwing red in the fall. Huh. But I noticed that <laughs> a lot of his fish catches have came on what I assume is a crawfish colored bait. Agreed. Uh, I, d I picked up on that just watching some of his fish catches. 
which often comes into play when you get on these lakes that have a lot of red clay and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know, we everyone wants to talk about how they're bait fish eaters, but obviously Man. there's still a lot of them eating crawfish um, and even in that clear water, but most people, you know, after springtime, they put the red baits away and it's all bait fish after that, but obviously it's working for carp milk. You can see it right there, that's the matchup, Swisher and Cartmel, and Swisher was not bad, five pounds, one ounce, first hour and a half of fishing, but again, like, like you said, Brandon, it all depends on who you're matched up with. Cartmel with a limit, he's already culling, seven pounds, so, uh, but plenty of time to change that situation, that is for sure. Again, we got four matches going on with our eight anglers who have qualified to be here. This classic bracket competition presented by Luz, and there, there again, Cartmel of Coastal Carolina, your national champs, going up against Florida Gateway College's Jackson Swisher, very experienced angler. Cartmel on top in that match right there. We got plenty more to come. These matches go all the way to three o'clock local time, and we will keep you on top of it. Be right back. the size of that bass. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood is brought to you live by Lose. Start Saturday strong with big noon Saturday on Fox. The fourth ranked Michigan Wolverines put their dominant ground game to the test in a tough road battle against Iowa today at noon Eastern on Fox. Big sports day here in the fall. Goes without saying, we got some big fishing sports going on. This is something different for you. If you've not seen this before, it's very, very interesting. Bracketed competition, the top eight college anglers through 2022 fighting for one spot in the World Championship. The Academy Sports and Outdoors Bass Master Classic coming up from Knoxville, Tennessee in March. I mean, Brandon Polnick, you've already yeah. said you're, you're 23 has already started for you. You're not taking a no. victory lap. You're, you're going to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's kind of how you have to play it in this game. Uh, you, know, you, you always got to be looking ahead, thinking forward, because if you're not, you're falling behind. And, yeah. um, you know, it's interesting to watch Trey. Obviously, he had a pretty decent practice offshore because we've seen him playing the offshore game, it seems like more this morning than anybody else. Um, you know, using a lot of forward facing sonar. And we heard him say earlier that he's seeing a lot of fish and usually he can, when he gets them to bite, he can catch them quick. Uh, but he hasn't been able to get a lot of bites yet this morning. That could just be a timing deal. Um, you know, where those fish, they can set up, but it may not be in their feed window. And if you hit that right, he could get right in a hurry. Oh, I yeah. Think. And then it's Trey Schroeder from McKendry University going up against Louis Minetti from UNC Charlotte. Now he's on the board. We've got all of our eight anglers on the board. That's a good thing. And as you say, Brandon, uh, all these matches can flip around in just a very short period of time. Yeah, and this isn't Trey's first time here. Oh, no. Either. No, no, so no. Uh, you can see he's, the wheels haven't fallen off the bus yet. It's still early. He's calm. And, uh, you know, I think the fact that he's been through this format before will eventually end up helping. Qualified for the classic bracket back in 2019. Won his first round match and uh, lost to Cody Huff. Yeah. Cody Lead Huff. series rookie this past year. Yeah. Made a run for rookie of the year. Yeah, had a good Late. Year. And Cody's a phenomenal angler. Oh boy! It, yeah. I mean, he's incredible. I was actually surprised he didn't catch him better earlier in the year. Having Rick Clun as a sounding board probably helps a little bit. Uh, yeah, that <laughs> probably doesn't hurt too doesn't much. Hurt things a lot. That's a hard barrier to break just to be able to get that kind of info. You know, he actually met him, became friends in the same town, Ava, Missouri. But uh, Rick Clint's son fell in the water, and Cody Huff was there to kind of help pull him out and really? dry him off, yeah. That was kind of where like, the, yeah. the bond mm. came into play. Well, then they started talking, and they talk all yeah, the time. Yeah, talk now, fishing yeah. all the time. And, and really, I think it's mutually beneficial for both of them. Well, I mean, right, Rick I mean, has said that he's learned some stuff from the, the yeah. young guy coming up with the electronics knowledge. Yeah, Cody does a great job with it. 
it was a lot of our picks for rookie of the year had a slow start though yeah and that's really what all it was is he just had a slow start but once he got his feet under him he's pretty tough to beat and I, I, you'll just continue as the years go on you'll continue to see things like that happen right where it could be Back one of these guys that we're guys watching there. right now oh. Trey or Lewis like they could come into the elites in a couple years and you're like wow well, well he's our pick for rookie of the year or they make a run at angler of the year Trey and Lewis, Lewis Minetti's are number one versus eight for the seedings matchup here going on right now. And Trey just now on the board. Lewis with the upper hand as it stands right now. Lewis from New Jersey. We've seen some bass anglers from New Jersey before, yeah. I think, do pretty well yeah. through the years. It uh, makes his home now around Lake Norman. So uh, see a lot of the same sights on Lake Norman as you would see around here. Yeah. Boat docks, uh, particularly. Definitely. When you start looking at North Carolina, South Carolina, a lot of those bodies of water set up similar, similar water clarity, uh, a lot of that red clay bank, seawalls, riprap banks, a lot of docks. That is a, that was a tiny fish, whatever that was, I mean tiny. Yeah. Two versus seven matches on top there, Michael Fogaro <laughs> just, of UNC going against Trey Schroeder. I have no idea. Maybe a bluegill? No clue. Excuse me, Tyler Christie. Yeah. We talked to Brandon Cobb, who's from Greenwood, our host city this week. Yeah. He gives a rundown on the lake that it used to be one of the best big largemouth lakes in the state. He'd go there for a big fish. He's caught 10 pounders there. He caught a seven and a quarter last week there fishing. He told me it's been kind of overtaken with spots, but there's still big largemouth there. So that's what we're looking at and how he said he'd go about this week with the rain because it washes out like we're looking for, but we haven't seen it yet. Yeah makes the northern end where the lakes rivers come in a little bit unfishable he'd stay but down below get his limit of spots like you were saying and the, kind of the opposite of a couple of these guys and then go for his kicker largemouth he's he say we're going to see a five or six pounder yeah and i mean that's your one cast away right like you could be watching any of these guys make that cast i would guess it's either going to come one of two ways either up shallow around some piece of cover or it's going to come out like of a brush pile. As little stress as possible is oh. going to be conducive to success this week. And we got time. So, I know what time it is. What? 8.40? We've got all time in the world. So. Tell me a little bit about TV. Oh, man. It, uh, special, special year, to say the least. Um, you know, it's been well uh, put together by the guys at Bass, Luke Stoner, Chris Decker. really want to shout those guys out um, for writing some awesome articles on us. But um, if you haven't read them, please check them out. Those guys put some hard work in and did a really great job. But uh, no, it's just a, a special year. Um, we had a blast with it. Kind of the same vibe I'm going for today. Just kind of, we had a good time. We try to keep it low stress. Um, this is positive attitude. And another key thing that I keep forgetting to uh, mention whenever we get interviewed, um, one of the biggest contributors is this past year, I really committed to um, being as anal about tackle as I could be. Um, just trying to put every bite in the boat. Um, so that, that's been a huge contributor that I've yet to mention in an article, but um, you know, it's just a, a special year. Um, the diversity of the fisheries, the way it lined up for us. Um, you know, you, you can't have a year like that, obviously, without hard work and 
a lot of dedication. That's how we got it done. But, you know, it, it, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And this year for us, it was. Um, just really glad it gave us the opportunity to be here. And I'm just hoping we can make something of it. Um, you know, I think it's just about every kid's who's in the fishing's dream to make it to the classic. So if we can get that done this week, um, just a really, really special year. Um, it already has been, but it ain't over. We got hopefully three more days of this. Um, and I'm excited, man. I, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of guys were probably nervous this morning. I was, I was kind of jacked to get out here, um, get fishing. So it's been, been some good stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I mean, prime examples right here. I got. I don't mind the Japanese ten-dollar swim baits I'm putting on my little swim bait, but uh, this rod and reel is—it's a freaking eighty-dollar Bass Pro Shops rod, and that's like I think they go for seventy these days. Fluger President reel, and dude, that's one of the best finesse reel rod and reels that I've ever picked up. I mean, I just—we try and do it on a budget try and get the best stuff we can for the dollar, um, whether it be the boat, the tackle, um, gas, whatever it may be. Um, and just really try to prove that, you know, you can compete without having the top level stuff. I mean, Luke did a great job um, in his article of, of explaining, you know, kind of how we felt about that. He asked some really great questions. But overall, I mean, you can get it done. I mean, geez, big one just jumped. But, uh, you know, I'm out here fishing a rock pile with a marker buoy and a Carolina rig, you know, centipede. It's the old stuff still works. There's still fish on the bank. You don't need to have live scope, all that stuff. You know, it all kind of contributed to our amazing year, and I'm hoping it contributes this week. Um, I'm trying to think what else I can really say, but yeah, I mean, you know, if there's any kids at home, high school guys, younger than that, that want to make a living doing this or want to give it a shot, obviously I haven't made it to where I want to make it yet, but um, you can you can give yourself a shot at a, a small rig, a, a cheap rig, a, you know, you don't need all the top level stuff. I know, you know, that's not maybe what industry companies want to hear. Um, they want us buying boats and all that, but you know, the, the sad truth of it is we don't all have money to do that, and I think most of us don't. Um, and I think fishing should be a sport that's more accessible I don't know what we can do to change that, but just know that you can give yourself a shot out of, you know, something like this. This is a 17 foot, I think 26 year old Ranger with a 115 on the back. We haven't broken 40 miles an hour today yet. So you can get it done. I mean, just hard work and dedication, really. That's, that's all I can say. Let's get on. Louis Minetti and Michael Figaro are team of the year. By one point, they won by Master one point. Series. Yeah, one point. Never lower than 26th place all year long. That's a that's a tremendous, tremendous uh, thing right there. Minetti, his match against uh, Trey Schroeder. Got the good lead right there. Good start today for Lewis Minetti from the 49ers, UNC Charlotte. And we will keep an eye on that team and our other three matches as well. There is plenty more to come from Lake Greenwood here in the Striking Bassmaster College Series. Boom! Look at the size of that bass! The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood is brought to you live by Lou's. Lake Greenwood in South Carolina, all 20 miles long of it. About 11,400 acres, not huge, but we just got plenty of room for four matches going on right now. Crucial matches, right? This is day one of our Bassmaster College Classic Bracket Competition presented by Lou's live for you here the next several hours here. That's the way our players are spreading out over Lake Greenwood there. We see the, the bottom half of the lake, uh, Brandon Polnick, uh, more in play. We, we expected if there yeah. were some results from the rain, it would happen in the, in the arms up north, Saluda and Reedy River. And it, it definitely could take a day before we see those effects from mm. the rain up north um, because it, it appears that the local rain that happened on majority of the lake didn't really affect the water clarity and if depending on how much rain happened how far north it may take a day before it gets down there oh my god jackson swisher with a good one looks like 
tell his body language is not just another 12 inch spot. Yeah. That's what we're fishing for right there. Large mouth. <laughs> Those will be the bites that make yeah. a difference. He's, he's two point. and a quarter behind Connor Cartmel in his number four seed, number five seed match. May catch him up with catch up with him on this fish. Four one. Four two. And mm -hmm. overtake him. That's yeah. how you want to start off the morning right there. Ugh. He's actually got the heaviest bag of the everybody right now you thought you think that was a four pounder coming in yeah i mean it it was all of i'm glad i didn't try and buck because he was skin hooked hmm. but a lot of times those large mouth they'll weigh heavier than the spots just because of the way they're built genetically. That rod, the daggone little clevis thing's messed up on it. Yeah, and it won't slide down the rod, and I'm tired of hearing it. Number five for Seth Slanker. Two one. Where am I holding? Two. You can see him. Two one. He's dropping, yes. dropping that fish, trying to touch its tail <coughs> on the carpet to get it to, to quit wiggling around so that yes, it they can get an accurate weight on it. A lot of times you cover their eyeballs. They'll really? Quit, they'll quit shaking. Yeah, and I don't know what it what does that. If it's a light thing, light penetration thing. They stop uh -huh. a gator from jumping what around. What I need to do. Do you cover their put eyeballs? A, put a towel over their eyes, yeah. yeah. Like a calming effect. Is that the technique you usually use? Uh, I have not done that. <laughs> Suge when he's out there gator wrestling. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I've had a little gator, but I haven't wrestled one. Seth and Jackson Swisher from Florida Gateway University in Lake City, Florida. The, the timber wolves used to be a big forestry school. Now it's a pretty diverse curriculum now. It's a bass fishing school, Tommy. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Schroeder going up against Louis Minetti, whom we just heard from a few minutes ago. Trey with a slow start this morning, but uh, we can change that picture very quickly. I think he's around quite a few fish, so it may take him a little bit to get going, but I think he's gonna just continually start to catch him. He may have to make a few adjustments. Now well, he's four pounds back of Manetti, so he may have cut that deficit in half with that fish. He's from my hometown of St. Louis. 
Really? Yeah, McKendree's on the other Miss side of the Mississippi yeah. River in Illinois, uh, 40, 50 miles in at least. Yeah. Not too far. Gonna break the news what he caught in practice. He was the guy who landed about a seven pounder during Thursday's practice. I'm curious if he caught that. Or let it doing what shake he's, off. Or, or, oh, well, or, just oh. like doing what he's we've mm -hmm. been seeing him do this morning, right? It looks like he's fishing brush piles offshore with the drop shot. I mean, that's a way you could catch a seven pounder on a lake like this. But I'm curious if he's saving that for afternoon, right? He's gonna put his time in, try to catch these spots, and then go try to chase that bigger bite. You got Brandon Cobb breaking down the lake saying the spots you, you can find and, and catch rather easily, maybe 20 to one. You get a 50 fish days out here. He said, knowing how to target those largemouth, and it's junk fishing, it is a brush 100%. pile, a lay down of. I mean, not only are you you're fishing specific targets, but a lot of times you're fishing specific fish. Uh, you, know, you get this time of year, fall time, you'll have fish that will have a home base. So if any of these guys found a big largemouth on a laydown or a dock and saw it but didn't actually catch it, left a it. lot of times you can come back and that fish will be on that same piece of cover. And with our catch, weigh, and release, may go right back to it. I wonder if anybody's in one of these competitions ever caught the same fish? I, you know, maybe not the next day, but I would say a day later, hmm. maybe two days later, you definitely could. So if they caught one, um, you know, like Schroeder catching a seven pounder in practice, he could go back and possibly catch that fish. That'd be a trick. Yeah, that'd be a good trick, <laughs> yeah. Going to Cartmel now trailing in his match with Jackson Swisher. This is fat. A little X zone on the deck there. I couldn't see exactly what he was throwing. One man, one man. What's my smallest one? Is that cold or not? Connor Cartmel, probably the closest thing we have to a local here. Grew up not too far from Lake Murray. He and his dad would do a lot of striper fishing. I, sus I suspect they did a little bass fishing, uh, largemouth bass fishing as well. Right now, le not, was leading this match. Now he's second to Jackson Swisher. Jackson with that good largemouth, uh, like we say, possible game changer there. Caught about 15 minutes ago. So we'll be watching that one and our other three matches throughout the morning here. We're going all the way to 3 Eastern time to decide the four who will pass on to round number two. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Oh, it is a special presentation today, something we have only once a year. Unique tournament, the Bassmaster College Classic Bracket, the top eight qualifiers from the 2022 season. The Strike King College Bassmaster Series are here, competing as individuals. In this competition here, the top three teams from the championship, plus our team of the year, I should put it that way. So that's eight in all. That's four matches, and there, that's the way they lay out for you right there. Let's take a look at that one in the bottom left there. National champion team member, Carner Cartmel, had the lead for most of this morning, but Jackson Swisher, Florida Gateway College, has changed that, caught a big, big large match. Tommy Sanders, Mike Sukhanen, one of 12 anglers to win Bassmaster Angler of the Year two times. Brandon Polnick with us here. And Brandon, it's uh, hard to believe a decade now we've been letting one of these college anglers find his way to the classic. I know. Kind of like about as long as you've been out there with the Bassmaster. It's true, Masters. yeah. I mean, yeah. it's been 12 years for me. I, I remember the first one, Andrew Upshaw. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, we even roomed together some, and uh, I believe it was at the Red River, and I, I remember it like it was yesterday. Oh, yeah. It's about right where you stand that he learned that he was the first college Just classic that. qualifier, about right yeah. there. Connor Cartmel. Better one there for him. That's probably going to add to his total. What's my smallest one? Okay. He's it's been the most now. consistent angler we've had this morning as far as just fish catches. He just needs that big bite. And it, it looks like he's throwing, I think it's a shaky head, uh, or, or it's just a weighted jig head, but I think it's a shaky head, and he's either throwing an X-Zone Deception Worm or a Muscle Back Fat Finesse Worm. I can't. Can't quite tell which Does one help it is. Connor kind of from Chapin, South Carolina, kind of in between here and Lake Murray. Of course, this water, the Saluda River, flows into Lake Murray. Well, Brandon, we don't want to embarrass you, but uh, <laughs> you need to be embarrassed. What, what an incredible season. Had the drama, it had everything. What an incredible 2022 it was for you as we take a look at your season. And, and oh man, this is so many high, this is a highlight reel we could go on for an hour with. Oh my gosh. There's so many cool fish catches. And I think one thing that's interesting when looking at this, everyone wants to talk about the, the fifth fish I caught on day two at the Mississippi River being like, you know, the AOI winning fish. Any one of these fish that you've seen on camera is worth 16 points. That's right. And I only won by 16 points. I mean, there were so many you know, big fish catches that I had throughout the year that made up that 16 point gap. Uh, you know, and with any, without any of those. I, mean, I, I remember this one, I caught this one on DT 16 in Big Shad. And I, I caught back to back almost seven pounders. And they, you can see like they just had it choked down. Oh. That's how you know you got the right color. Second place in that turn. Yeah. So much fun. Great success right here in the state of South Carolina as yeah. well. Third place could have easily been a win. I mean, yeah. that was that was a good tournament. Oh my gosh, Santee Cooper was amazing. We're going back next year. It's oh, going to yeah. be amazing again next year, I'm sure. Uh, looking forward to that. Santee Cooper's been good to me the two times that I've got to fish it now. Uh, and like what you're seeing here in day three, Mississippi River. I had a troubling day two. Gosh, day three was like, that was the way I wanted to end my season. I mean, obviously you want to end it with the trophy hoist, well, yeah. but uh, catching them like I did on day three is exactly what I wanted. I had a story of doing that uh, you became the 12th angler with multiple, more than one AOI title, and I ended it with you saying, well, I may be looking at number three. I, this I one mean, hadn't sunk in yet, but I may already be looking at number three. You, you can't get to number three without getting to number That's two right. first, and I guess just the, the competitive side of me always wants to, I'm always looking forward. Um, and I, I try not to do that too much. Like I, I want to kind of zero in and like enjoy the moment, you know, and not get too far ahead of myself. But I always, I, I'm always looking forward. Like what can I do next? Like what's the next thing I can do? Um, whether it's on the water, off the water, on the business side, then, uh, AOI is no different. Right? You win the second one, you're like, well, the only way to get that feeling again is to win another one. Well, let's bring it around full circle to these guys right here. Our first look at you. You took a yeah. different route to get to your first classic you through the nation championship in New Orleans, Louisiana, finished top yeah. four in that one right there. How important was that to you and how important will it be to our eventual winner here? It, it really just, it's giving you the platform to boost your career. Uh, that's what it did for me. I mean, when you come out of the nation at that time, nobody knew who I was. Nobody could pronounce my last name, let alone <laughs> spell it. And and I think the Classic was my first professional event ever. Uh, I could barely even grow facial hair at that one. And, <laughs> and I think that, I mean, here we, I mean, look, is. take take a look. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, there we go. And that was my, on, that was the first time that anyone had really seen me fish professionally. And uh, 
being able to have a good event there, just it kind of put my name out there, right? Where people took notice. And then the crazy thing with fishing is, is that you have to then back that up. You know, I could have easily just disappeared into the, the smoke and mirrors, but uh, was able to so far continue to be able to catch them. Yeah, seems to be the case. That's <laughs> <laughs> two time good job, Congratulations Brandon. again. We got eight guys looking for that moment on the big stage, which could come very, very early in their career. You know, all you got to do is win three matches in a row here and get the job done. That's one of the coolest things with our sport is you, j you just never know when that next guy is going to come along that just shakes the whole fishing industry. Um, and it, it could be any one of these eight. Yeah. Well, who are a couple who have come onto the elite stage in the last couple of years? Patrick Walters. How about this rookie of the year, Jay Shakurit? Yeah. You I mean, think he's going to continue? I think Jay will continue to catch him. Um, I think his mentality, you know, he's pretty even keeled. That's going to help. His dad's one of the best tournament walleye fishermen out there. Um, so he's been around it. Funny story when he won the St. Lawrence River and I was congratulating him on day four and stuff. Uh, and his dad was there and I was talking to him and he was telling me a story about when I finished second at Green Bay and yeah. they were there at the event and Jay made his dad go out and follow me around and Jay was 13. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, now I'm becoming one of those guys. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, like. I will say you don't look any different than that footage from Lake uh, Katawachi that we were watching uh, that's just, good. just a few minutes ago. I appreciate that. You got that. a beard now. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Just had one break me off up under that dock. I think he just ran me around that post. When I set the hook, I, it's a 10 pound line, didn't stand up to it, but um, still only got two. We're back into that creek. I caught those fish this morning. Probably the creek I had the most bites in, so we might stick it out in here for a little bit and see if we can fill out our limit. I think this cloud cover's got some of this offshore fish that I had in my brush kind of scattered. So, haven't had any bites out there yet, but I'm sure we'll be, bite again, I'm sure we'll be back out there later today if that sun peaks out especially. Tyler Christie McHenry going up against Michael Figaro up in the upper left-hand corner there. Michael from UNC Charlotte. with a lot, a lot of tournament experience. Michael Figaro fishing in his second year of tournament fishing. <laughs> so how about that? That's crazy. That's off to him. Oh, come on. We have just completed our second hour of fishing. These guys are going at it for seven hours during the course of this day. They'll wrap it up at 3 Eastern time. We're a long way from finding out who the four will be who will advance to the second round. That's coming up right here tomorrow, same time. So put that on your schedule as well. Exciting stuff here from Lake Greenwood in South Carolina. And we've got much, much more angling on the way with our classic bracket competition. Look at the size of that bass! The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood is brought to you live by Lou's. A bracketed competition continues here live for you. Our coverage from Greenwood Lake, South Carolina there, equidistant between uh, Lake Murray and uh, Clarks Hill. If you're a fishing fan of these parts of the Southeast, and there are our eight anglers engaged in four matches going on right now. Let's take you right out to Andrew Vereen, part of our national championship team from Coastal Carolina, who, uh, who uh, are from South Carolina. Same as when I left you. I come to a brush pile that I found some fish in um, Thursday, but going over, the fishing sitting on top of it like they were. Just gonna spend a little bit more time here and then pull up that bank right there. I caught had some blow-ups Thursday morning right there in all those treetops. Well, for one, the wind, 
A lot of the fish that I was uh, catching, or I noticed I was catching were all on this side of the lake, the west side of the lake. And uh, pretty much just position fish with the wind putting them there, all the bait blowing into these pockets. Oh, man, that was that was a good time. It was something that I've dreamed about, and I'm pretty sure everybody probably dreams about. And uh, when we heard it was going to be on Winyaw Bay, we stopped qualified yet. So we did everything we could to qualify, and it was a nail biter because when we went to Logan Martin, and we knew it was our last shot. And when we finished in eighth, it was a good drive home, knowing that we qualified, and then it was just keeping our minds straight. And home field advantage is a lot, but. I mean, there were two other boys there that had home field advantage as well and didn't do as well. A lot of pressure on how many people are watching you. But we just put our head down and fish. We didn't get a lot of bites during the tournament, but we got the right bites to come out with what we did. I was expecting to do a little bit better, but um, it was enough, and that's, that's all I care about. Action from Winyah Bay at the 2022 College National Championship. Andrew from Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina, around the Myrtle Beach area, so definitely those guys knew they had to get back. They had to do the last chance route, and well, it worked out. That should have been an omen, that, right, Brandon? Yeah. They, they made it in through that, that they <laughs> might be the winners. Huh? Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it takes sometimes. Home cooking? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Winning at home. And those fish they were catching there, I've been to Winyah Bay. Those were definitely above average bass. <laughs> Those are hard one fish there for sure. Yeah, those are good ones. And you hear a lot of these guys talking about this morning the lack of wind that they're having. Yeah. Um, which is crazy to think that a hurricane just went through there and now we have a lack yeah. of wind. Uh, but that, that just positions those fish so differently in the bait fish and then uh, the sunshine will make a big difference as well or the lack thereof. You know, when you get cloud cover like this, a lot of those fish will get spread out, uh, especially the guys brush pile fishing. Swisher again. Your leader in his match. And he doesn't even have a limit yet, I don't, don't believe, so. This may be number five. Here. And the last one we saw him catch off of the dock was a four-pounder. I have pounder. no idea what this is, but it is massive, whatever it is. Oh, boy. I think it's a big old catfish. Yep, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking if he was gonna catch another four or five pounder, he was gonna be hard to beat. Well, I, he was hung on a little piece of brush, so I popped it, and I popped it, he ate it. And that is our best match. Number four, Connor Cartmel, 712, Jackson Swisher, Come on. nine pounds. I was like, please be an eight pounder. Please be an eight pounder. I mean, they're, they're one, two on bass track, but you don't want to be on, you don't want to be number two in that bracket no, right now. No, you don't. Come on. He ruined my line. He's got the formula for a winning bag, a, a four pound, two ounce kicker. At so far, hour. he's just yeah. got to get his limit. We've heard all these guys talk about that one big bite, but Jackson's the only one we've been able to see actually execute on that so far. And, I'm, and that's why you see him top of the leaderboard right now. See, he was slimy. I got it all over my hands now. My hand's gonna be slipping off the reel the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, we got dinner. So this, this tournament, you know, it's a different event because, you know, it's hard to really fish and, you know, if you start catching, you know, get off of them because, you know, you got to, you know, you, you don't want to get eliminated. So kind of coming in with a mindset, I'm not, I'm not fishing 
to get a whole lot of bites. I'm fishing to really, you know, catch five good fish. Just you gotta bounce around and catch some, you know, smaller ones. But I'm hoping the way everything's setting up today, I'm hoping I can catch a, you know, another big one or another good fish. Just it's definitely a lot different than anything I've ever fished because it, uh, him. Ready? Yep. Should be number three for Tyler Christie. I'll take those. One pound, ten ounces. Okay. Keep it number three. Let's keep going. Was not expecting that bite, to be honest with you. Skipped up under that dock and looked down at my pan optics and Watch him just swim right up under the boat, sitting right under the trolling motor. He dropped down, I watched him follow it down. He left my screen, I picked up and he was there, so. That's the thing, I think without the sun, I think some of these spotted bass and largemouth, and I ain't really caught a largemouth today, but I think some of these spotted bass are not under the docks. I think they're just swimming around them. They're roaming a little bit more. So, like that dude, I mean, he's just sitting out in front, but helps when you can stay off the docks. Looks like he's sitting there with that shaky head. But, I mean, that's an example of where your electronics can come into play. And he, he was talking about he's, he's fishing the docks, skipping the docks. Uh, and then all of a sudden sees a fish underneath his boat. That's just information that he's processing as he's fishing along. And then he starts talking about how the cloud cover he thinks has a lot of the fish moved up, you know, moved off of the docks. Right. It's like the hardest thing to do for me when I'm fishing. Something about breaking over halfway. Uh, you know, a little bit. Um, obviously, we get a little bit less practice for these than we do for these normal tournaments. So your mindset's a little different. Um, but you always just gotta remember in these, I mean, you're fishing against one dude each day and weight's not cumulative. So um, it's definitely a little bit different mindset. Uh, going to a new body of water too. And most of the time these brackets are on bodies of water I've never fished. That definitely makes it a little bit difficult, but we just keep an open mind throughout the day and fish the conditions and take what the lake gives us. I don't think I'll be saving very many fish. I'm not getting a ton of bites anyway, so um, I think we're just gonna look on winning the day that we're at and not trying to win a day, not trying to win Monday when we're on Saturday right now, so. He only learned of this Lake Greenwood a month ago when they qualified through the national championship and it's been off limits. Nobody has been able to fish on it. Tyler Christie from Bol Bolingbrook, Illinois, freshly graduated from McKendree University. If you're graduated, you can still fish. He participated during the year of 2022. And here's his match as it stands right now, having taken the upper hand over Michael Figaro, Tyler Christie, who would list the De Plains River in Illinois as his home water. So he's uh, he's used to toughing it out, yeah, that's for oh, sure. Yeah. You just got to imagine that. So maybe a guy to watch here. Four matches going on. Got to win this match if you want to advance to tomorrow. Big day here on Lake Greenwood. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood is brought to you live by Luz. Well, tonight on Fox, the fight for the NL East is on as Pete Alonzo and the Mets take on Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves. Or the, Raves take on, uh, the Rays take on the Astros. The action begins at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check for the game in your area. Big series. They're tied. Oh, the top man. of standing. Everybody's trying to be Mr. October here on the first day of October. <laughs> Who's going to be the 
Mr. October, four of them, the Mr. Octobers <laughs> of fishing will emerge today, but we're a long way from figuring out who that is going to be. We've got four matches going out there among our eight qualifiers. One of them, at the end of it all, will find his way to the Classic 23. It's all taking their best, biggest swing at it. Absolutely. Andrew Green, national champion, Coastal Carolina, trailing in his race against Seth Slanker. Oh, nobody would be upset to watch that thing get blown up on right now. <laughs> oh, no. oh. oh, see? Uh -huh. mm, that old tree can't get on. Oh, stay on there, stay on. Oh, uh -oh that's a good on. one, too. You better look up, too. I mean, I would say better, better than average oh, what we've seen. Oh, good girl. Wow. <laughs> oh, it looked way, it looked a lot bigger when it's sitting out there, but. Not bad. I mean, it's going to help his cause. Number two? I do believe so. A little spot on top of him, I think. He is so much more calm than I am in that situation. <laughs> A little bit of good fortune involved in that fish staying on, yeah. there, I would think. 111. 111, that's her. Yeah, usually uh, treble hooks, lay downs. Mm -hmm. That's not usually a good combination when they get stuck like that. We saw some crazy Number stuff two on with the day. Uh, Lee Livesey and my fork reaching down and grabbing fish up. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I believe, I am told that that is going to be our B&W trailer hitch's replay of the day. Always welcome around here. Let's watch. Oh, beautiful. I mean, perfect place for a fish to be staged up, ready. You know, looks like he's halfway back in the creek. As those Bait fish will start to transition, move back there. These fish are going to be getting set up on any piece of cover they can get on, right? A lot of times bass are they're ambush feeders, so they want to get up next to something, let something come by. Nice little top water action. Nobody's mad about watching that happen. No. <laughs> we love it. We're brazen about it. That's we could watch that all day long. I'm not mad about it. It's a BW <laughs> replay of the day so far. Much needed fish for Andrew Barine. There. That was number two, only number two for the day. Didn't ask you, Brandon, what would you be throwing under these conditions and what you know about this lake? I would definitely be throwing a lot of top water. Uh, I'm one of those guys that I love throwing top water, especially when it gets really flat and calm. I think it just draws those fish from a big distance. Um, I'd probably be throwing like a big walking bait. Or, you know, when I got around some of this cover, I'd be throwing like an Arashi cover pop or something that you could keep it in the strike zone, uh, you know, or something that you can cover water with. Uh, and then when you get to a target, slow down. But that's the, that's going to be a way that this time of year, you're going to catch, you know, better than average fish and you can catch a lot of fish as well. Andrew, in competition with that man right there. Florida Gateway College's Seth Slanker, who's got the upper hand, his limit in the boat. And he's hooked up. <clears throat> got 7-1, so... If he upgrades any, it'd only be ounces. Yeah, maybe small upgrade. We have a bite, not a cool. We'll jig bite. What's that put me out now? Or they don't do total, do they? That slanker still in charge in his match here. Let's take a look at our number one seed, really? Lewis Minetti. He's hooked up. 
probably get rid of that 14 ouncer. Jeez. Still throwing mm, that Carolina. You got right? it. I waited a little too long on that one. <laughs> I don't even know if you're going to get rid of that little 14 ounce. Well, catch away and release here all day through the three days of competition. All our weights are official for that reason. Usually with Bass Track, we. you that it's unofficial. He ain't bleeding, so. Good? Yes. You told me you go to weigh in oh, all your fish yeah. now, Brandon, right? I, I do most Thank of the time. A few situations I don't. Uh, but I, I've Some been flurry around. time. Cold, yeah, maybe? flurry where you feel like you just you need to this get in there like and take advantage of the right timing. Uh, but I well, since I have all, done we got five over a pound, such so a good job really doing of uh, making a cast with six fish in my live oh, well, no. <laughs> I've tried to stop doing that and control that. And uh, I think weighing them um, has kind of helped that a little bit this year uh, where you know, I can, yeah. I've used the, the Rapala tournament scale. And so I have to physically press like which one I'm going to call out and then I have to go back there and grab that number gotcha. and so it's like it's one extra step that kind of slows me down in the moment but it's uh yeah I, I'm just I'm trying to control that I get so amped up in the moment sometimes that yay I'll just make another cast thankfully so far it hasn't cost me we get amped up here right here watching you <laughs> fancy stuff now the next okay. question is, do you accurately mm -hmm. put your, where you get catch a fish that goes 3.5 on your digital scale, do you, do you put it as a three and a half or um, do you usually just fudge a usually little bit? Usually pretty close. The hard, I really thought he was I was gonna say fish. the hard part is when you do put it in accurately and you get back to the weigh-ins and you start looking at bass track after you check in and you're like, oh, I'm not so bad. And then you realize that everyone else is two or three pounds off on oh. their bass track. <laughs> I don't leave. They interrupt me. Lewis yeah. fishing against Trey Schroeder there on the right, Trey. For, and here's and Lewis's several, partner. And several notoriously so, Brandon, uh, low yeah. on their bass track has to be. Starting to see a lot more spinning rods come out as the day goes on. <laughs> Almost like the sun wants to break through, it's getting a little brighter in <laughs> areas. And the clouds are thinning in spots, the waves are still, well, the bands are still. Hold on, we got a bite. Yeah. Fox Weather said it's supposed to be mostly cloudy today and start getting some breaks in the sun tomorrow, uh, but that could happen a little earlier. Are trailing in his match. Tyler Christie from McKendry. Four matches going on right now. Mm -hmm. Once a year we get to do this. It's great competition for one, one of our college anglers from 2022 to make it to the Bassmaster Classic. You see Monetti. And his matchup with Trey Schroeder. Trey Schroeder from Missouri, Louis Minetti, originally from New Jersey. It's Minetti with the upper hand right now. Almost seven pounds, officially. Well, officially, six pounds and 15 ounces in the boat. These guys are going to fish on. They're going to be working hard till the very end. When it's lines out of the water at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Cartmel ahead of Swisher, and we'll check in on the other two races when we return. the size of that bass. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood is brought to you live by Lou's. Eight college anglers from the 2022 season having outworked, outfished the rest of the nation. A series of tournaments, great, great job getting here to the Bassmaster College Classic Bracket competition. We've got four matches going on among these eight right now. And 
We are far from decided on any of them. We have seen some comebacks already from slow starts and who knows what lies in Not the rest really. of the day. Here's Louis Minetti going up against Trey Schroeder. Minetti from UNC Charlotte, Schroeder from McKendry Spotted University. Spotted bass sure are spunky. Wait till y'all see how embarrassing this fish is for how much he's fighting. <laughs> I'll probably get, I'm gonna get rid of that one too. Let's redo him. Why not? Okay. Probably gonna go one four again. Oh, one three. One three it is. <laughs> All right. One three. Big one, baby. We're gonna have to get rid of those anyways, so don't matter to me. Let's move on over to Jackson Swisher. <laughs> when did the ounces come into dicks? Florida Gateway University, our leader right now with 11 pounds and five ounces in his matchup against Connor Cartmill. Got the big kicker, four pound, two ounce large mouth. Maybe another. I mean, really, that 4 2 is the difference maker between no, him and Carmel. What's my last one? 110, yeah, he ain't a 110. Talked about that big, large mouth, but if you're just picking mm -hmm. up with us, you're going to see. Back. Many, many more spots <laughs> during the course oh, of this yeah. day. About a, about a 20 to 1, according to Davey Hyde, who lives within sight of this lake, <laughs> says, as far as what people catch up. Spots to largemouth. There's about 30 more under that dock. It really seems like there's not a rhyme or reason to when you're going to catch that four pound largemouth and when you're going to catch. You know, one of those 20 spots. We, we see him catching back-to-back -back spots off of a dock. We see him catch a full yeah. pounder off of a dock. You think of spots as they being the just, main lake roamers and everything. Here they, they are, bunched up under a dock. And it's hard to tell what's under the water, but a lot of times that will dictate when you see that happening. Uh, you know, there could be a brush pile mm. under that dock that is separating it from the other docks in the area. Uh, there could be a creek channel swing or a creek, you know, that runs up against that dock. It's got steeper contours that is kind of congregating those fish there. I mean, there's obviously a reason that there's a group of fish around that dock. Uh, and above the water, it looks the same as all the rest of them, but a lot of times you're mapping your contour lines will tell you that there's something different there. Jackson Swisher holding on to that lead there, catching him steady all morning long into our third hour of competition. Well into our third hour of competition, back over to Connor Cartmel from Coastal Carolina. Hails from Chapin, South Carolina, just down the road here. Right on the seawall. I don't know. Be, uh, I don't know if it'll help. I don't think it was one six. You agree? I don't think he's one six. All right. Brandon Cobb, Elite Series angler. He said the, the big largemouth are oh, very random. I caught a you two and a half pounder in that same spot Thursday. He said he caught a seven and a quarter last week fishing out here. Brandon coaches the local college team here, doesn't he? 
Yep. Yes, he does. Yeah. This is the deepest seawall I could find. So Cartmel will fish on here. He said right off the seawall for that one. And you heard him say this is the deepest one he's been able to find all week, you know, where, like we were talking about that dock that uh, Swisher was fishing on. You know, there's something different underneath the water that's grouping those fish up. He said he, he'd caught two fish there earlier in the week off that same seawall. So obviously they're congregating there. It's reloading. Probably a place we'll see him fish more. go from this match, Cartmel versus Swisher. We're to the uh, number two and seven match. That's going to be Michael Figaro and Tyler Christie. He's going to kind of size up his day for us. Picked up our third not too long ago. He's definitely fishing a little bit tougher today. Um, I'm hoping we can pick up a few more while we're in this creek and then I can go look for some new areas. Uh, this is the first day I've seen this place when it's cloudy, so I definitely think it's got the fish scattered. That's my biggest thing right now um, compared to when we, went out, when we were out here practicing, but we'll find them. This lake's got them. I'm not going to run too far here, but. Get back out to Florida Gateway College's Seth Slanker hooked up live. He's in a match with Andrew Vereen from Coastal Carolina and in the lead in that match. No, it's just a Berkeley. Correct. Flat side. Mm, flat side seven. And four on the hill. <laughs> Need to start coaling. Need to start coaling, need me. Two pounders, and then a good deal. Cobb said you could have 50 fish day day out here and only have around 11 pounds if you don't get your kickers. Yeah, definitely seems like that one to one and a quarter is the average. Get back to Tyler Christie. Yeah, well, Landers University is in Greenwood. Right, yeah. The Brandon That's Cobb where coaches. Brandon Cobb is the coach, yeah. Be of decent size. Okay, that keep there. A little large mouth. He should go. Hopefully, he's going to be close again, but. Inches he had to measure. Zero out. Never good. No. Yeah. But when you don't have a limit, you right. take every 12 okay. inch you can get. Okay. One pound, one ounce. Oh, that's a big one right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> it's not a big one, but it's four. So. Oh. One more to go, and we'll go head hunting. Tyler Christie's been fishing tournaments since his junior year in high school, so that's six years for, for the recent graduate of McKendree University. We'll be watching him and his match all day long. Also, this win right here. Louis Monetti, UNC Charlotte. UNC Charlotte has played big in these national championships before. One Jake Whitaker was a national champion, and he's a fixture on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Along with Andrew Helms, he won that championship back in 2014, I believe it was. Take a break, and we'll be right back. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series, presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood, brought to you live by Lou's, is sponsored by Minn Kota. 
power pole. Skeeter boats. And by Rapala. Well, here we are coming back to Lake Greenwood. Uh, you can see our anglers are still spread out across Lake Greenwood here in South Carolina. Um, and it's, I mean, it's been action packed this morning. Going to our national champions this year, Andrew Vereen. You haven't seen the guys move around much today. I mean, they've no. been pretty much stayed in the area that they started. Yeah, we heard right before a little break there, Tyler Christie talking about how he was going to stay in that same creek where he had most of his bites, and then he was going to go look for new water, look for uh, a bigger bite possibly. And it it seems like looking at the map that a lot of those guys have stayed kind of in the same general area. That's probably good, not starting up the big engine that often, and you know, even if you're only moving a mile or half mile. Yeah, and I think this time of year, there's just there's certain places that uh, you know those the bait fish will start to congregate more and that's probably what these guys saw on Thursday when they had their practice day and then with you know having a day off yesterday getting canceled they you know probably just kind of sticking with what they're comfortable with where they have some confidence they have coaches that can give them advice or the McKendry coach is kind of Gives them little hints and makes mm -hmm. them kind of figure it out themselves. But did you wish you had a coach start now, Brandon? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I had a lot of mentors and, I mean, somewhat coaches, but they weren't official coaches. Um, and that, that would definitely, I mean, it, it helps, right? I mean, you see the impact that it's making. It shortens mm -hmm. that learning curve. Uh, I don't know, it's pretty awesome to see. Like on the Elite Series, guys room together and give each other hints. Okay, yeah. try this. You're down in that area. You know, they don't want to fish on their roommates' areas, but they do clue you in. Yeah, I mean, you're always talking about, you know, what's going on on the water, what you're seeing. Um, and, I mean, one thing I know about bass fishermen is we just like talking about bass fishing. <laughs> You know, like, well, there's that. Uh, you know, we, we just we talk about fishing. It doesn't matter whether we're driving down the road, whether we're sitting around a hotel parking lot. Like, we will talk for hours and hours about bass fishing. Never about the big one that got away, though, right? Uh, and once or twice. Yeah. Maybe. Andrew Vereen from Coastal Carolina that you see on your left there going up against Seth Slanker. That's Lanker from Florida Gateway in this uh, our two versus seven match as far as seeds go. Michael Pagaro of UNC Charlotte going up against Tyler Christie of McKendry. Such, I got a, I got a trivia question for you. Okay. Sure. That involves our special analyst here today. Oh boy. Tyler Christie lists his home lake as a lake on which Brandon Polnick notched one of his Elite Series victories. What lake would that be? His home lake? Yeah. No, I'm sorry. No, no, no I'll take it back. I, I got the wrong guy. I got the wrong guy. I'll, <laughs> I'll, re I'll, I'll reframe that question. <laughs> Hold on to that thought. If, if there is one of our anglers. Trey Schroeder. Trey Schroeder of McKinney. What's his home lake? Well, it's, a, it's a good piece from St. Louis where he lives with Bull Shoals. Right. There you go. There you go. It's Bull <laughs> nice. Shoals. That's a good drive, though. Yeah. My first win. Yeah. I was there. Yeah, I remember you coming in. 2012. Went to the hospital. All got a hook cut gone. out of my hand. in your pinky and taking photos of you, and you go get removed, and we find a wall of pain at the hospital with all kinds of hooks from Bull Shoals and the White River. And I think I remember there was like a... A chain from a chainsaw That's what, or exactly something. What I was thinking. Yeah. I, I there remember was, seeing that picture. Yeah, how did that get there? Was, Snakes and jars. Was, there was some weird <laughs> stuff really on that wall. And the wall I, where you want, I remember being in the helicopter and, the helicopter and guiding the, on, the, the, the take that pilot. pattern on to each yeah, day if I make it each day. And so I try and catch what I can. Um, I feel like I need a lot more than what I have right now to um, to do. 
good, but we got time. Uh, hopefully his son may come out a little bit and position these fish under these docks and all. And uh, start picking my jig back up and skip, skipping under some docks with a jig. A lot of buzz. kind of slow for me this morning mm -hmm. compared to practice. This is just kind of like a, a funny thought that uh, watching these guys this morning of how short that learning curve is and how good they are is that about the last week or so on social and articles and stuff that a lot of the elite guys have been putting out number one bait i've seen from most guys is talking about a buzz bait in the fall and then here we are <laughs> watching a bunch of these college kids what are they doing throwing a buzz bait in the fall uh, and that's not by coincidence right there's a reason for that but they're a student of the game and I just thought that was interesting, of like, you know, just watching it of the articles and just things that I've seen in the last week come out that they're pretty much right on par with that. Just not much in the way of secrets anymore. Or no, there's really not. It's kind of the information <laughs> era, I suppose. Information overload. Yeah. And we had a lot of tournaments. There's, I think one year we had like 600 different college teams and some of them have, you know, 10 two-man teams, some of the bigger colleges, the Bethels yeah. and Auburns and stuff. So you're talking more than a thousand college anglers, I mean, on the minimum, yeah. you know, when you're down to eight guys. But then they're going through the paces, bass in these tournaments, they learn how to fish and come to a tournament and weigh and fish and they talk and yeah, they learn techniques from other regions, from anglers from other regions that they come across and meet. And I think it really, you know, that's why you see a lot of guys coming on in the opens and fishing on the elites who fish yeah. college. One of perfect example, that's Michael Figaro. This is just, he hasn't been fishing that long, but here he is in our bracket championship oh, with a chance to make it to the class. <laughs> Every bracket champion I've seen has gotten pretty emotional that they kind of realize right away, I am in the Bassmaster Classic. That is the goal of all of the Elite Series anglers every year. One of the first goals, make the Classic. Oh, hands down, that's one of the very first things. I mean, that was my motivation all year was catch them good enough in the beginning of the year so that if I have to miss Pickwick when my child was due, right. that I can at least still make the Classic. You know, by missing an event and that it's such an important thing because you can't have a shot to win it if you're not there. So qualifying is the first, first and foremost. Man, there's some good looking stuff on that lake. Seth Slanker's got just under a seven and a half pounds. We heard him say minutes ago that uh, no way that's going to be in there. You guys usually have an uncanny sense of where you stand versus the field. It's it's probably harder to figure out on, on something like this. I mean, it's... You, you... Yeah, it's, it's way easier to figure out when you're basing it or when you're competing against the entire group of anglers. But when it's head to head, you don't know. You could have a really good bag, but the there just happens to be a guy that's got an ounce more than you and he's leading the whole entire thing, right? And you're in second and you don't advance. And that's really unique in this format with the head-to-head -head bracket style competition. It just adds another element into it. And it really it just allows these guys where they can't lay up, you know, they can't yeah. let off. They've got to catch as much as they can every single day. Yeah. Conversely, you could win with one fish. And I think we saw yeah. that a couple years ago no, in an oh, elite yes, absolutely. bracket. And the way that this fishery is setting up, one bite is most likely going to make the difference. We'll probably see it throughout the entire competition.
four anglers with limits. Best one is uh, Jackson Swisher, 11 pounds, 11 ounces. Yeah. It's our number five sweet seed from Florida Gateway. Jackson Swisher trying to run down, well, already having run down that man right there. Excuse me, Seth Slanker having run down Andrew Vereen right now, but we got our arm matches in play, that is for sure. Louis Vanetti leading Trey Schroeder, Cartmel. Behind Swisher. Trailing the Swisher. Vergaro yeah. trailing Christie and Vereen with uh, two fish. Trailing Seth Slanker right now. We got a lot more action on the way from Greenwood Lake in just a few minutes when we return. Look at the size of that bass! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Almost two hours more live coverage for you of this Bassmaster College Series college bracket competition. Of course, tomorrow we've got more of it here on FS1. Starts at the same time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll bring you some coverage then. It's a good, rare opportunity to see this uh, bracketed head-to-head -head matches going on out here. Eight have qualified from the season of 2022, the Strike King Bassmaster College Series, including our team of the year. And they are going at it in four discrete matches today in which we'll have four emerge as winners and they will be the ones fishing tomorrow in two matches. All the way through Monday for the final. Hey Mike, I want you to tell me about what it was like, you know, maybe talk about your partner, you know, for the team of the year. It was, it was a big honor getting to win Team of the Year. I know that's a goal that me and Lewis had from the beginning of the year. And just, it was also an honor just getting fished with Lewis. But I know that he's really prideful in what he does out here on the water. And I know he likes to, especially when it comes to fishing, kind of kind of keep his circle small and everything. But me getting to be able to fish with him, I mean, I learned an incredible amount this year and was able to contribute in every tournament. And I think me and him kind of just meshed well together every tournament. And that's how we got this Team of the Year victory. Garo again, fishing in only his second year of tournament fishing. Does this look like a guy who's only been fishing, period, for three years, Brandon? No, not even close. And he won team of the year. I mean, that's by no accident. <laughs> Obviously, he's no. got some natural talent. Uh, yeah, it, just by watching him, you wouldn't have thought that this was only a second year of tournament fishing. Definitely looking like an old pro here. Certainly fun to watch here. So thankful to be able to fish given the weather this weekend, but we have seen some good fish catching going on right here. We can take a look at our Strike King uh, fishing report right here. Take a look at some of the action we have witnessed for you this morning. There's our four matches there. Let's look at this one between Lewis Minetti of UNC Charlotte and Trey Schroeder from McKendree University. Spent a lot of time with Lewis Minetti today himself off to a good start. He's had a limit for some time now in our Strike King Midday Report. This was really happy. early. Yeah, I mean, you can see how dark it was this morning. Low light, but a lot of our anglers caught him. It seemed like first thing right away. Uh, and Lewis was one of those guys that got on him early, got a couple, that was a little bit better than average bites. Uh, that, that's the first clip I've seen where you could see that green light. A lot of those bait fish will get around him at night low light like that, a lot of those bass are still hanging around. James Minetti told us how he's a big advocate of everybody being able to fish, no matter what your means are. <laughs> Made a pretty impassioned speech about that for us today. Dang. He has been I wish I had your steadily friend, all you. morning long. No, that's fine. Not Garrison. run into a big one yet. He's only got seven pounds, but he is leading. Trey Schroeder, his opponent. He's only got two fish. Slow start to the day for Trey Schroeder. He 
is reported to have one of the bigger fish caught in practice. So you don't know if he's trying to get a limit and then, and then work on his kicker. Definitely seems like it. Trey Schroeder from McKendree University. He's made it to this event before back in 2019, so he's looking to keep gaining ground, keep, uh, keep his momentum that he found a few hours ago going for today. Let's look at this matchup, two and seven. Michael Figaro versus Trey Christie. Tyler Christie. What working? Another one of those early Works. morning bites. He talked about how he was catching quite a few of his fish along this riprap wall, this rock wall. Uh, and this time of year, that's a great place to catch them. You've got access to deep water, easy for those fish to move up and down and chase bait. You know, they've got something vertical they can push them up against. Michael Fugaro hanging in there as best he can up against Tyler Christie. He's been just kind of slow and steady. You know, he's been staying in the, the same creek all morning, it seems like. Uh, and we heard him talk several times about how he's just, he's trying to get that limit and then he's gonna go change things up and go try to get that big bite. So I'm really looking forward to see what his afternoon looks like when he does get that limit, what changes he makes, uh, what adjustments he makes. The anglers don't know the other anglers wait. They will take a break for 15 minutes and discuss. Okay. And share. Andrew Vereen and Seth Slanker match. Let's take a look at Andrew Vereen, part of our national champion Coastal Carolina team from 2022. Vereen has another fish that hasn't registered yet. He's got two fish for two pounds, 12 ounces. Okay. This was that one that we missed. It was very early, obviously, another one of these early fish this morning. That was, that was his, his best one of the day. I don't know what kind of structure he was fishing there, but that looked awesome. He's that buzz bait <laughs> bite. Oh yeah, this is the second one we saw where he had it hung up in the tree for a second. That was a great bite. So Andrew Vereen with two fish in the boat, his opponent. Seth Slanker from Florida Gateway. Been catching pretty steady today. A lot of one pound, one and a quarters. He's a little over seven pounds, seven pounds, six ounces. Doing a lot of different things too. It looks like he's fishing similar water, but he's switching up his baits a lot. I've seen him catch him on a bladed jig, catch him on a crankbait, um, some finesse stuff. I was gonna ask if you saw a trend within the whole group of what they're throwing today. Uh, you're definitely seeing a, a, lot, a lot of shaky head drop shots and then a lot of top water, it seems like. With the guys that are fishing docks, you're seeing them. You've seen quite a few bladed jigs, jigs on the bottom, uh, you know, stuff that's easy to skip. Let's take a look at this matchup between Connor Cartmel, Coastal Carolina, going up against Jackson Swisher of Florida Gateway College. Cartmel out to the faster start of the two to start his day today. This is our heavyweight matchup of the day yes. so far. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. These guys are one and two on bass track. Uh, and I mean, they've both been catching them. Just the, the biggest difference maker is that big one for Swisher, which we'll see here shortly. But yeah. I would say Cartmel's been, been one body. of our most consistent as far as just numbers of fish catches. He's been catching them consistently all day. Good average size for those spotted bass he's brought in. Of course, uh, plenty of spotted bass brought in by Jackson Swisher, but as you mentioned, uh, the difference maker was the largemouth. Flew like a five pounder when and, he jumped. And so far, R Jackson's the only one that we've seen that's gotten that big kicker bite so far today. And we've been talking about that being the difference maker. You can see it right there. Four, that's two the largemouth bladed jig up that's underneath how you the dock. To start off the morning right there. And that's when you're seeing a lot of one to one and a quarter pound spotted bass, that four pound largemouth goes a long ways. Oh, I'm not sure if it's the same dock, but he said he was fishing a dock that had about 30 fish under it. How do you target the bigger ones under there, Brandon? Uh, a lot of times I end up throwing a bigger bait. 
you know, I'd probably have a bigger That's oxy simple. glide bait on. <laughs> and I, I mean, you just, you try to wean out those small ones so that you catch that five or six pounder and all the two pounders follow it out versus catching the two. Get out of the way, little guy. I'm eating this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, exactly. Nice. There. Uh, something a little more compact pitch around, but they seem to be liking this little bit smaller bait. You know, I'm throwing her on a on a uh, finesse jig rod, you know, a 7.3 loose finesse jig rod, so I can really, it's got a soft tip so I can skip it around and it's uh it's going it's going pretty good you know after this morning i was a little a little stressed out but you know i think everything's starting to to line up for me so you know i've been picking you know booger man buzz bait and tossing around a little bit too haven't had any heat buzz bait yet but gonna really i've been really pounding on these these you know deeper deeper docks um you know with a little bit of brush under them but probably about to in a little bit i'm gonna toss it up a little bit and try and you know fish for large mouth and you know, go shallow try and probably that's about the only way i know to to catch a a big one so but it seems like the deeper dock with a little bit a little bit of brush under them you know if i, if I can feel the brush with the jig Seems to be the ticket. And I've, you know, caught one on a dock and, you know, throw it back in there and catch another one, you know, sometimes. So, a little concerned without any sun right now, but still just plugging along. Jackson Swisher of Florida Gateway College comes yeah. off as. About a five or six year veteran of the Bassmaster Elite <laughs> Series and the way he fishes his talk, everything. These guys are so far advanced uh, to be college anglers here. It's quite, quite impressive to watch them at work here. With a fantastic opportunity being dangled in front of them this week, this special week. Chance to go to the World Championship, the biggest stage for bass fishing in the world. This is our Bassmaster College, college Classic Brackets, Bracket Competition and we got four matches going on full speed right now and these guys will not let up until it's all done. We'll be right back. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood is brought to you live by Lou's. Lake Greenwood's in Central South Carolina here, about equal distance from Augusta, Georgia and Columbia, South Carolina. Not a huge lake, about 20 miles long. And 11,000 11, acres. A lot of shoreline, 212 miles of shoreline. Yeah, a lot of hidey holes up yeah, along the side. Pockets and creeks and so <laughs> forth like that. We can get out to Tyler Christie in this match with Michael Figaro. He's got the upper hand as it stands right now with uh, six and three quarter pounds. Okay. That happened out of nowhere. <laughs> All right. There we go. That's five. Yeah. Now we can get out here and go head on. Yeah, that's what I've been waiting to see. Curious to see what okay. adjustments he makes now. Mm -hmm. Relax. One pound, five ounces. All right. Well, it's number five, so. I'm gonna go out and look for some bigger fish. Might do a little bit of graphing now. We'll see, either way, we're out of here for the day. That is five, right? Yes, sir. Awesome. I guess it will be interesting to see what he does, where he goes. Tyler Christie now with his uh, limited spotted bass in the boat. He wasn't lying when he said he caught his limit and he was gonna yeah. go and change he wasn't like he caught it and didn't even make another cast a lot of you guys will tell us one thing and then you'll stay for two more hours we've noticed i, I mean I, I think i probably would have made at least a couple more casts but he, <laughs> i mean that that's actually a really hard thing to do right okay, is cool. deciding when to go when to stay but he had it in his mind that when he caught five he was going uh, and i mean that's that's actually a pretty veteran move i think yeah. 
Well, he's leading his match against Michael Figaro of UFC Good Charlotte old. by about four and a half pounds. Yeah. And had he hooked up. Yeah. There we go. Maybe. Might help his cause a little bit. I don't know if he's going to help, but. Well, he might. First large man. Well, not zero. OK. Good? Yep. Neil Paul keeping him straight there. Mm -hmm. One five? There's one five. Sounds good to me. First large mouth of the day. Little guy. Little V twin action. Neil Paul's gonna be busy. He's got a far off the bank that fish can? Bassmaster open next week on Lake Hartwell. That's right. We'll be here next Saturday for that. Maybe award a classic uh, qualifier. And mm -hmm. Big money for the winner. And some Elite Series invites. Yeah. Yeah, because that'll be the last one of the Southerns. Oh, <laughs> Good. Someone about took a buzz bait to the <laughs> face. I thought he had it. That was a better one. Louis Minetti grew up fishing a lake called Manasquan Reservoir. Manasquan. Is that electric <laughs> only? <laughs> What's that? Is that the electric only one? Is it? Yeah, I think yeah, it might yeah be. that's right. It, I thought electric, I was reading, electric motor only. Yeah, I thought oh, I was yeah. reading something that he mm -hmm. uh, grew up fishing a lake that was just electric only. Maybe we should have done this earlier. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if it's a lake that's electric only or, you know, 300 plus thousand acres like Oahe. I mean, you can learn how to catch bass just about anywhere. You just never found them in Oahe, did you? There's Me? a little bit of slip up this year. I, I found lots of them. You, oh, you, you just showed us lots them. of great oh, pictures. I just couldn't catch them. <laughs> oh, no. You, you had some terrific That's, uh, pictures. That's one of the downfalls of the, your electronics. Like I could see them all over Come Mega on, 360, Mega Live. It didn't matter. I mean, they were, I could see them. I just could not figure out how to catch them. Make sure to keep this on the line. Looks like we're starting to get just a little bit of a breeze on mm -hmm. part of the lake. Supposed to pick up, but not more than five miles an hour this afternoon. Man, not much. Kind of eerie after yesterday it was blowing and there's white caps. Yeah. From Hurricane Ian. It didn't start raining there till about 11 in the morning yesterday, and it rained till bands came over the lake in the region till yeah. about eight at night. Still got really good water clarity, so even just that slight ripple can help, you know, at least break up the surface, especially these guys throwing buzz baits. Let's take a look at how our matches are progressing right there. We just saw Louis Minetti, he's leading pretty good margin ahead of Trey Schroeder. Connor Cartmel started the day with the lead, but Jackson Swisher erased that and more. He's sitting up there getting close to 12 pounds. Mike Yarrow. Tyler Christie, Tyler Christie on top of 612, Andrew Vereen, and Seth Slanker. It was a tight match, but Seth has pulled away a little bit to the tune of seven pounds, six ounces. We'll be right back. Whoa! Whoa! 
Look at the size of that bat! The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood is brought to you live by Lou's. College Bracket action continuing live here from Greenwood Lake, South Carolina, in Greenwood, South Carolina. And we've got eight teams at it right now, or eight, uh, eight anglers at it, formerly members of teams. Fishing as individuals for the first time this year as college competitors, and they are shooting for one shot at the World Championship, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. Let's get out to Louis Minetti. In the middle of his uh, matchup with Trey Schroeder, Louis Minetti from UNC Charlotte, Trey Schroeder from McKendree University. Minetti's hooked up here. Looks like a decent fish. Golly. Oh. It's definitely going to help. Come here, man. Nope, you're okay. Good job, Hammer. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. Didn't even get in the mouth. He said he missed a good one earlier, too. Come on, give me three something. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, oh yeah, baby. Hold on a second. Four of Four even. Four even, baby. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. <laughs> give me that. <laughs> Four even. Gosh, that's a pretty fish. That's the one we needed right there. V twin. Look at the eye on that thing. <laughs> that's gonna push him all the way up almost to ten Give pounds. Give me some, babe. <laughs> Give me some. There you go. That's the one we needed right there. Let's freaking go. <laughs> V twin. Gives him a five. Ooh, that probably pound. scared me. <laughs> She's running out of the boat. Do they have Man. a UNC flag out there? Is that what that is? <laughs> no, oh, no. That's, a, that's a sponsor flare. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> sponsor flare. I know. Whew. I Good thought man. maybe be there. Let's take another look at that one. Good one. They're on the twin buzz bait. I haven't seen one of those play in a while. Dude, I thought it was like a two and a half when I hooked it. <laughs> yeah, did you see that terrible cast? Lewis Minetti taking a commanding lead over Trey like Schroeder right there by about tomorrow. five pounds. The second biggest fish we've seen on the day. We saw Jackson Swisher with a 4 2. Not? Now a 4 0. Those definitely seem to be the difference makers. It was what, three pounds? Close to? Two and three quarters? I think he's talking about his upgrade. So yeah, almost three. Good call. <laughs> Gave him about a three pound upgrade. So I'm at 9.15. Trey Schroeder's on three fish for four. 413, so he's we just five try pounds, two ounces back. There, that's all. I'd really love if I had somewhere I could pull up on a point or something, get a couple like pound and a half, pound and three quarters, just better than average. This is a good looking dock right here.
curious what makes him think that's a good looking dock. Is it because it's close to the point, the way it sets up under the water? Obviously something that he's seen in the last few days that he's been on the water, you know, Thursday practice, today. He's gotten clues that uh, tell him certain places set up better than I kind of tend to like these old crusty other. looking docks. Uh -huh. See them poles are falling apart and another little thing I always like about a dock is if it's got a bass boat on it. <laughs> that means it's got either some brush on it or maybe the guys released some fish here before. Um, just kind of fishy looking. It's got a lot of shade. It's got two big top parts to it. Roofs, I guess the normal person would call them. Uh, good looking dock. That was impressive. Y'all see that, Skip? <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, I don't know, it's a nifty looking dock. It looks fishy. I'm all about it. The only problem is, is this lake, most of the banks I've found don't have a real steep drop to them. So there's, I thought that was a fish, but I don't think it was. Um, they don't yeah. have a real steep drop I to mean, them. One of the, one of the so coolest things that like, we haven't really talked about today is that there's, of course, there's Bassmaster Classic berth on the line today. The ability to have entries paid for all the opens. But, I mean, these kids are fishing on Fox. Yeah. And on the FS1 live, that d that doesn't happen <laughs> very, like, I mean, I never would have thought when I was in college that I would have had a shot to fish on FS1 live. Um, I mean, I, we didn't even think that we would have that ability on the elites, let alone to be able to do it as a college angler. Um, and that, that alone in itself is a big deal. That leads to a question though, Brandon. First time you're ever made, mic'd up and have a camera in your boat. A little intimidating, and then I've heard some big name anglers. It, I think Davey yeah. Hay told me once that his first camera was a little intimidating. It can be the first time uh, because it, it's something that you're not used to in your normal process, right? There's someone that's always watching you on the back of your boat. But, I mean, watching these guys, they, it doesn't really seem to phase them that much. Um, and I think part of that is You're right. just due to their age and how much more they've been exposed to media. And, uh, you know, it's just something that, ooh, we're around. Oh, looks like, no way. Looks like it might have broke off. Trey loaded up good there for a second. Hmm. Wow. Could have been fishing a brush nice. pile with something really sharp it. around it. Yeah. Small fish don't tend to eat jigs out here. <laughs> I mean, you're talking about college bass fishing being on like the leading sports broadcast that you can get, <laughs> and that's. It's just so cool to, s for me, just to see how quickly our sport is advanced and that we have the ability to do that. I mean, the Bass really Nation wasn't like wasn't this in 2010 when you no, won? That, no, <laughs> no, the elites weren't even like this when I, <laughs> We've in only 2010. had live technology for this is the eighth year. We've yeah. had the, the ability to do live and in the, in the beginning, it yeah. was fairly rudimentary. Yeah, I mean, my first couple of years on the elites, there wasn't any live coverage. Um, right. You know, it was just the shows, you'd have to wait for the, show to come out a week or a couple weeks later and uh, and you were only getting bits and pieces right you got to see an hour-long show of 32 hours of fishing where now you just you nearly get all 32 hours of it i don't have any math but i think you have been the most mic'd up and on camera angler winning two angler of the years in the time that we've had bassmaster live but let alone six victories you're Tied for fourth among active active guys with six wins. Louis Minetti making a big breakthrough in his battle against Trey Schroeder. We see it profiled right there. Four pounder makes a big difference, obviously, 
here on Greenwood Lake, and there he is, nine pounds, just under 10 pounds for Louis Minetti. That is an official weight, by the way. We are catching, weighing, and releasing here, and Trey Schroeder with his work cut out for him. He wants to get back in it on this match here. There's the rest of our matches and the way they are stacking up at this point, and none of them you can call at this point. We'll step away and be right back. Start Saturday strong with Big Noon Saturday on Fox. The fourth-ranked Michigan Wolverines put their dominant ground game to the test in a tough road battle against Iowa today at noon Eastern on Fox. It's a gridiron action on the way today, this weekend here. Great sports weekend in America. Great weekend for fishing here and something different for bass fishing fans today. This bracketed head-to-head -head competition. We hardly ever get to see that. It's always a lot of fun to watch with so much at stake for one of these college anglers to get a spot on the biggest stage in bass oh, fishing. Awesome. Seth Slanker leading his matchup with Andrew Vereen of Coastal Carolina. He seemed to have a number of catches early, but he hadn't caught one in a while. One and a quarter pounders. Yeah, he's really just missing that that big bite. Our preview in this lake, Brandon Cobb, Elite Series. Right. Said they're they're few and far to come by, but you can find them. Yeah, they're random. That's most likely what he's looking for with the limit. One of our one of five anglers with limit so far today. Two big bites we've seen so far have been around Later dogs. Today, should, these fish should pull up under these dogs. In practice, they were, as the day got later, started positioning under these dogs, for me at least. Okay, Schroeder's weighing one. Well. Four. Get this Costa had in there. Thanks, Costa. <laughs> ah! Just got his fourth one. Good thing we're fishing in bass. <laughs> Still got a lot of work left. He could one bite though, and he's he could be overtaking Lewis Minetti, who's got almost 10 pounds. Yeah, the biggest difference there's that four pounder that Minetti caught. Cool. I don't know if he caught Thank it you. actually under the dock or if it was between the docks on that buzz bait. I've been seeing him throw it kind of between and my luck that would have been him underneath at 59. That would have been a no good. <laughs> Trey seems to be the most comfortable offshore of all the anglers we've got. We've seen him spend the most time out off the bank, uh, doing the majority of his work with the drop shot this morning. You see a little blue sky back there? And there was a little glimmer of hope. <laughs> yeah. A little glimmer of blue sky. What's the worst yeah. weather conditions you've ever fished? I know we canceled yesterday because of the hurricane uh, and passing through and there's 30, 40 mile an hour winds hitting the lake. I mean, at, at home I fish in the snow a lot when it's like 10 degrees out. Oh. Like, real cold stuff. Um, on the elites, I don't, I don't know, probably just some, some thunderstorms, heavy rains. That ro rolled through during the day because we don't let you go out anymore. No, a couple of years ago at the Sabine River, it was oh like my. 100 or 105 degrees, and then this torrential downpour came through, and the humidity <laughs> was, it, um, it felt like it was melting your skin. Yeah, that's the world capital for humidity. Oh anywhere my gosh, it was Within hot. side of Houston, Texas. Fish bit good, though. As long as the fish are biting, I really don't care what the weather's doing. now or when like I'm live right now that uh, day's not going quite as planned I was planning on having a limit by now but I ain't got but two lost a big one just a little while ago and had the opportunity to another one but um I don't know it's a tough day so far but we ain't quitting so 
Just searching for one fish at a time. That's all you can do, I reckon. You don't get hung up in the trees. I was not this calm when I was in my early 20s. I still don't think I'm this calm. <laughs> Yeah, there's elites who've been doing it for, for a couple decades who still get their heart rate and breath going when they get on a good run of landing fish. Yeah, I mean, I get way, way too amped up sometimes. Just the two fish for Andrew so far reigning national champion, one of the two reigning national champions, bass fishing. What other national championship suits do we know Coastal Carolina for? Oh, a little, a little trivia to you, I yeah. do believe. That is a little trivia question huh. for you, Such. Coastal Think about Carolina. It. I'll give you a clue, 2016. He's thinking hard. Hmm. I don't know if I understand the question. What do we know the college Coastal Carolina for? The Yeah, yeah. Coastal hmm. Carolina, yeah. Was it the basketball? No, but it was it involves a ball. <laughs> <laughs> you're on the right track. You're, you're you're close. Could they upset? Upset? Uh. No, it wasn't an upset. Well, well, I guess I guess you could say it was an upset that they won they won this giant NCAA event. Think seriously no. on that for a second. <laughs> Coastal Carolina, out of Georgetown. Drawing a blank right now. I, I, I remember the school name. Yeah. But I don't remember what sport they. We'll let you think about it, Sushi, and we'll come back with the answer. I'm glad he threw it to you because I have no you idea. You know it? No. <laughs> no, not even close. Not even. Andrew is from Merle's Inlet, South Carolina, so he's a, he knows the tidal fishing very, very well. It's right there in the, not too far from Winya Bay, where he, he and his partner, Gunnar Cartmel, won their championship. Definitely starting it to was do a great experience. Um, we fished our strengths just like we fished back home um, through a buzz bait mainly. That was a key bait. And uh, flipped around a worm. Um, going into the tournament, it was a tough practice for us. I didn't think we were, we finished where we did finish and be so close. Um, but yeah, it was, I like when y'all lot. It sets up just like back home, the Swanee River we fished. And, um, it's been a great year with him. I'm ready to have an, another year fishing with him. All right. So these guys finished up second in the team championship uh, over there on Winyaw Bay. Place I fished a couple times. They're making it look way easier than it is. <laughs> catch fish there, but that is probably why they finished up runners up the national championship, catching some good largemouth. You heard them say they weren't qualified. They had to go to the wild card to get right. in this event because it was in their home waters. Yeah. Now we're on a on a break. This is mandatory. A little bit in the next, you know, last few hours. Uh, probably fish some more docks, but fish a little bit different, you know, fish probably some more shallow ones because it seems like you know, every time I'd roll up to a shallow one, I, I have noticed that I'd get a bite. So I'm gonna do that, and I might hop around on some shoals and stuff like that. So I'm just trying to, I just gotta get a big one now. You know, I've got my limit and, you know, the, the 
little ones to go with. I just need a, I just need a kicker now to hook me up top. So the plan is just go fish for a big one next. He said he needs a kicker, but didn't he already catch a 4-2 uh, earlier? He's, in he the needs day? a second kicker. I think he's got the biggest one of the day so far. He needs a Plan B kicker. Uh, the morning started off. I mean, we caught a fish within probably about 10, 15 minutes, and then had another one come up on it. It was probably four or five pounds of good fish, but um, they ended up catching him. Fish around for a little while, didn't get a bite, and then went to my brush pile that I was hoping to be able to catch a limit out of, and fish just weren't piled on top of it and around it like they were in practice. So they ended up catching a fish there, but put about a two pounder or a 111 in the boat on a bank right close to it and then hooked up with another good one, about probably three, four pounds, and he ended up coming off, so that sucks. We've had the opportunity to have more than we have, but uh, just didn't capitalize on it, so. Day ain't over, we gonna get back after it here in a little while and see if we can put something together and not, not give it to him too easily. Have they told them where they stand at this point? Hey, I'm curious. Here, um, it's, it's hard to tell. Uh, better than expected. Uh, we've got five fish for almost eight pounds. Yeah, almost eight pounds. So, I mean, just looking for two more bites the rest of the day, and I think I'll be good. I don't know what Jackson has, but no, no. I mean, we'll see. Just gonna keep my head down, just keep grinding until I get some big bites. That's the plan. I don't know what so they haven't told him yet. They were going to yeah. tell him. Um, no way, I got six pounds. Start that again or just went live? Okay. Well, we're sitting up right now on uh, the guy I'm going up against. Not by much, though. I mean, I'm up by a fish, so I, I think he's only got two right now, but I only got five for six pounds. He got just one three pounder. He's right there with me. Um, so we're definitely going to have to call up a few times this, this afternoon, 100%. And I'm going to go looking around for some stuff that I. Um, I at least had a few things that I didn't get to look at in practice and see if there's any fish on them um, and maybe hit a few more uh, areas that I know and just try to catch a bigger fish. I need something in, over two pounds. I don't think I have a fish over two pounds today, which is pretty bad considering I had a few of them over two pounds on Thursday in practice. So hopefully I can uh, find a few more fish this afternoon and get something going to get me to tomorrow. So you've been running the ball. You need a deep, deep pass, don't you? Yeah. What's going on, guys? Uh, definitely could have been a worse start. Um, we kind of meddled around with tiny spotted bass there for a while. Um, I think we had, what, seven pounds, seven and a quarter, something like that for a long time. Um, rolled up right here just a little bit ago. Caught really key fish, four pound largemouth. And uh, feeling all right. Um, I think we got it. A one three or a one five in there still, and I think I might, might have one of each, and uh, definitely want to get rid of those. Maybe a couple two, two and a halfs, maybe another kicker. You know, we'll take whatever we can get. But feeling okay. It's been a good start. I don't like I said. I don't know how well the lake's fishing. I'm not gonna find out how Trey's doing, um, but he's a great fisherman, and you know I don't want to let off the gas by any means. So we're gonna keep trying hard. Uh, I'm probably Fish most of the rest of the day up shallow, maybe mess around a little bit more out deep, just seeing if they maybe set up at different times. I fished a pile that I felt really good about probably about two hours ago and didn't get a bite off of it. So we might check that one more time and then uh, I'll run a couple of these points. Might could catch, you know, a better sized spotted bass off of them, two, two and a half, hopefully. But I think a lot of the rest of the day is going to be spent just cranking that V-twin around, see if we can't upgrade a couple times, maybe pitching a jig on some docks that look good. Um, so yeah, that's really what we got. Louis Minetti talking about his match with Trey Schroeder. Which he, leads, he leads by about the uh, weight of that good largemouth he caught. Uh, yeah, so this morning we started offshore. We, uh, we pretty much only fished offshore and uh, we have not had the start that we were hoping for. Um, we still got plenty of time in the day, and I didn't really catch them till later in the day in practice anyway. So I'm kind of hoping here that I can catch a, a good one or a couple two and a half plus pound fish 
cool up a bit and uh, take back the lead. We're only about four, four pounds back, four and a half pounds back, which is very doable out here. Practice caught a seven, so one bite you can make up that ground very easily. We just need to uh, get one of the right bites. And we're gonna stick with it. This is pretty much what I've got is all brush piles and stuff like that. I got a couple banks we could go throw a buzz bait on, but I don't know if that's gonna be the way to come back yet. We'll decide that after a little while, longer fishing offshore. Got a couple places we could go throw a buzz bait, but I didn't have a, I didn't have a keeper on it yet. So that's just kind of a, kind of a whim. So obviously our anglers getting the option, I, I would, I would imagine yeah, to, sounds like to hear the weight exactly. of their opponent or not. So it's interesting to see the ones who decided to get that and, and the ones who didn't want to know. Then it takes all kinds <laughs> to make it up. But we got to, we got some good matches going on there, Minetti and Schroeder. Just really one fish separating those two, Cartmel. Trailing Jackson Swisher by a pretty good margin right there, but that is certainly doable for Connor Cartmel. Michael Figaro trailing Tyler Christie and Andrew Green trailing Seth Slanker. We got much more to come from Lake Greenwood. Whoa! Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Got the better part of an hour left to bring you live fishing from here at Greenwood Lake in South Carolina at the Bassmaster College Classic Bracket Competition. We have eight qualifiers from the season of 2022 the Strike King College Bassmaster Series, and they are shooting for one giant, giant carrot on the end of the stick there, and that is a chance to go fish the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic coming up from uh, like uh, Fort Loudon and Teleco. Upper Tennessee River, Knoxville, Tennessee, in March of 2023. That is a big, big opportunity for one of these eight who was out there, all of them out there, each engaged in their own match. Four matches going on today in this head to head bracketed competition. Taking out to uh, Lake Michigan. There's Connor Cartmel, still about to finish up his break. They take a break at noontime. Thought maybe he was going to tell us what's going yeah. on there, but I think he's <laughs> lost in his thoughts right now. He's... Let's take a look at our co-champion, our co-national champion in action earlier today. Actually got a good start, had the uh, best three or four fish of all of our competitors to start the day in the first hour. He was leading for quite a while there. And still, I feel like he's been, you know, one of the more consistent ones throughout the majority of the morning, doing some different stuff. You're just picking up with this uh, Greenwood Lake, a lot of spotted bass. So we'll wait for these guys. Obviously, uh, they change the rules a little bit every year. These fellows, they take their break. It's, it's midday right now, and, yeah. and they're given the option whether they want to receive the, the score of their opponent or not. Some did, some didn't. Which would you do? Yeah, Brandon. <laughs> oh, man, that would be tough. I, I think in this format where it's head to head, I would I would probably end up taking the option to know. To know. Uh, yeah, it, because it's a lot harder to judge whether or not you have you know, like where you sit, you, it's easier to tell where, where you are against the eight. You know, you may be in second or first, and you know where you have a, a decent bag. But when it's head to head, you can be in second place, and the guy that you're head to head with is in first. That's really difficult yeah. to know, you know. And so I think that makes a big difference. I would probably take the option to know, like, whether or not I needed to leave those spotted bass and go search for that big largemouth or whether I could just, you know, kind of keep nickel and diamond them with the spots. If I had 11-11 in the lead like Jackson Swisher, I kind of want to know. <laughs> and if I had one well, fish, two fish, yeah. I don't know if I'd want to know that I was eight pounds behind somebody, but then I guess, would you change your tack and go all largemouth fishing? Yeah, I, I think head, I think when it's head to head, I would want to know. Because 
you're competing against that one guy. So whether you're in second or third overall amongst the group of eight, that may not matter. And it, and the way that this lake seems to be setting up with these guys where you've got a lot of numbers of spots, but that big kicker largemouth is separating a lot of these guys, I think I would want to know what, what yeah. I needed to do. You know, I'm, all right. Just called lines in, so the break is over. We're out here with Tyler Christie. He's one of those guys that said he was, he spent a lot of his morning in one area, said he was gonna catch a limit, and then he was gonna go fish some stuff that he had looked at a little bit in practice, but he was also gonna check some new water. Yep. You know, your teammate is also competing. We don't have any teammates going head to head, but how much information would you share to uh, help each other out? Uh, you're, a, you're, a, you're a free, you're a a lone agent here. I mean, but, here. I mean, a new body of water, college yeah. angler, I'm sure you've studied and talked with your coach and probably give you a little bit of advice and... Yeah, I, I think I, the fact that you're not fishing against your opponent right away, you would try to help, be, you know, your teammate, yeah. I guess, not your opponent, but you're, you're not fishing against them right away. I would try to help each other out and try to advance both of you as far as possible, right, so that it you know, the hope is that you end up going head to head the last and final day on Monday. Nobody's going to be saving any fish today, though, right? I mean, nobody could feel confident enough to say, oh, I'm going to lay off this, no, this great spot here or anything. No. You, you've got to go for everything. Right? Yeah, the weights are too tight and it seems a little bit too random from what I've seen this morning that none of these guys are really going to just lay off of them. And I mean, they're. Nobody has ran away with yeah. their head-to-head -head bracket yet that they can just lay back and um, you know kind of take it easy this afternoon. I think they're going to have to keep catching them. Of our eight competitors, we have uh, five with limits in the boat right now. Swisher, Monetti, Cartmel, Slanker, and Christie. Andrew Vereen and Mike Figaro the bottom each have two fish so they got a lot of headroom a lot of room to grow Trey Schroeder with four fish as it stands right now there are your brackets and that's the standings between the matches right there Manetti ahead of Schroeder uh, Swisher ahead of Cartmel just one bite for Trey would tie him the, up uh, maybe on the strength of a, a big four pounder that uh, certainly is a difference maker for him Figaro trailing Christie and Slanker ahead of Andrew Vereen as it stands right now. Our matches carry on. We will step away for just a moment and be right back to bring you more from Lake Greenwood. Tonight on Fox, the fight for the NL East is on as Pete Alonzo and the Mets take on Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Braves or the Raves taking on the Astro. Astros. The game begins, the action begins at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check for the game in your area. Big pitchers duel there. Max Scherzer went to my high school, Parkway Central. Max and Scherzer Kyle went to your high school? Yeah. Wow. Not at the same time you were there, I'm thinking. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we look forward to that big time baseball tonight on Fox. That will be one to watch for sure. Important race. Here's Seth Slanker hooked up. Seth leading his match with Andrew Vereen. This could put him way out there. Curious to see what this what he's got. There between 111 and 112. Is that the sophomore from Lake City, Florida? Looks to enter his third year. Florida Gateway. I thought he was a big one when he got wrapped around that post. Anglers 
Massachusetts. I, I pestered my folks into driving me to all kind of Tuesday night tournaments and stuff like that. Drive me out there, pick me up, do all that. But that's how you that's how you learn tournament fishing. I mean, that's what it takes. A lot of times, it's just that constant time on the water, all those experiences. Michael Figaro stuck on two fish still. Caught them fairly early. I believe he caught them right here where we see him fishing mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Brandon, you remember your first boat, your first rod <laughs> and lures you used? Yeah. Way back I'm, when? And I mean, the first bass boat I ever stepped in uh, was a family friend's. He had a, a Skeeter ZX-195. Oh, well, that's not so uh, bad. No, that was great. Yeah. But uh, the first one that was actually, like, considered mine uh, was actually, like, an old 70s ski boat that used to have those wraparound full windshields. Uh, and it had some nasty like fake leather seats and it just a <laughs> just a cheap uh aluminum deck and funny story on that i had a 101 pound thrust mincota on the on it at the time i believe it was a maxim back then and it was way too much power for that boat and i kicked it on high sideways one time and ripped the screws <laughs> right through the aluminum <laughs> deck and it was just hanging by the wires <laughs> That was pretty much about the end of that boat. Oh, man. Trey Schroeder. This could be number five for him, still stuck on four fish. Be close. Yeah, got to be 12, 12 inches. So he switched it up a little bit. Went from the drop shot to underspin. Ooh. Not exactly the one we want. <laughs> Yikes. Supposed to be five pounds, not point five pounds. <laughs> I think we'll be lucky if he goes a pound. Fourteen ounces. Yep. Those spawns great. can be long and skinny. Mm -hmm. These ones actually look fairly healthy. Yeah. Some places you go, they're right like little cigars. Oh, yeah. That's the, boy, there are a lot of them. Even Lake Green. It's about how fishing goes. You catch a seven there in practice. You catch a. 13 incher there in yeah. the tournament. <laughs> I've been wondering if he caught that big seven pounder he's talking about in practice, whether he caught it on the bank or offshore, but it sounds like he caught it off the bank. I'm guessing it's around a brush pile, the way he's locked in. Think maybe this brush pile? He's That's what it in. sounded like. It sounded like he was talking like he caught a seven there in practice and Caught that little one. But I, it seems like those big bites are just random. You know, we're talking, they could, you catch one in a brush pile, catch one off of a dock, catch one off a lay down. Could just, one could be just on the seawall or a little stump on a sand flat. Junk Fishing 101, Brandon Cobb, Lead Series uh -huh. brethren said he caught a seven and a quarter last week. Yeah, did he say how he caught random. it? No. Not bad. He's not giving up any clues. Could be better, but. Yes, sir, I did. Brandon Cobb is off doing something that uh, sounds like you'd be doing. He called me back from Seattle on his, on his way to Alaska, Alaska to go halibut fishing. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Seattle, he's in, I mean, I guess my neck of the woods. That's only a five hour drive. <laughs> It's closer than any Elite Series tournament. We hear, hear you've had some great exploits in the outdoors of late in your... I, I have. Uh, September has been a lot of fun. I've been in the mountains, in the elk country, chasing elk around in the mountains in Idaho and Montana. Was able to knock one down a couple days ago, actually. All I was, right. I finished up processing it at my house <laughs> on, <All> our, right. <laughs> on our kitchen island two days ago, so uh, finished up Thursday, flew out Friday, actually got out here late, late last night. And the week before you helped Carl Jacobson process his. Yeah, correct? we did. Yeah, actually just, yeah, a few days before Carl had gotten one and we processed it all at my house and 
got everything frozen up so he can make the trip back to Tennessee. Mm. I'm sure he was really excited because the photos that you guys have taken over the years going hunting together, yeah. I, enjoy, I certainly enjoy those. You guys have seen some spectacular scenery. Oh yeah, it's a blast. It's good to switch it up. We spend so much time on the water, but September in the Northwest where I live is, it's such a hard month because you want to go elk hunting and then the fishing is also incredible oh. <laughs> at the same time. So you can go catch five pound smallmouth or seven and eight pound largemouth. And it, it's hard to choose which one you want to do. You're talking about Coeur d'Alene? Yeah. It's great yeah, in September, huh? Yeah, Coeur d'Alene's a great fishery in September. I, really all of our lakes around North Idaho are great that time of year. Eastern Washington's got some great fisheries and it's hard to choose. What's the best fishery in the Spokane Valley? <laughs> Actually in the Spokane Valley? Yeah. Probably Long Lake. Long Lake. Long yeah. Lake just just north of Spokane a little bit. Um, but it's it's got some great large mouth, great small mouth. Some thirty pound bags. Wow. In there every once in a while. Our colleague Davey Hyde, who actually can see Greenwood Lake from his property, says that uh, <laughs> springtime, 20 pound bag, what it would take to, yeah. to have a shot at winning a tournament. Right now, 13 to 15. Does that sound about right to you, Brandon? I, that, from what I've seen, I, that sounds spot day, on. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah. and a lot of that probably has to do with like the time of year he's saying those bigger largemouth that seem to be the bigger ones in this lake. Springtime, they're a little bit more reliable, a little bit more predictable, right? Their water's warming up, they start moving toward the bank, uh, and where this time of year in the fall, they're just so spread out. You know, they're, they're not concentrated in any one certain pattern or area of the lake. Uh, you could probably run up the river and have just as good of a shot catching a four plus pounder as you could right off the dam down at the lower end. So that, that makes it tough to get on those big bites and you know, if you're gonna catch one of those, you may spend several hours fishing, running bank, running different stuff without catching one, and then you just all of a sudden get that big bite. When you won, basically this week in 2020, over on at the other end of this watershed, over yeah. Santee Cooper, what was your game plan going into there? Because we knew it would be different than how you'd normally go out. Yeah, there. it was completely different in the fall time, and that was the first time I'd ever seen Santee Cooper. And, uh, you know, really my biggest thing was finding where there was a healthy population of fish that I could not spend too much time running around because it's a pretty treacherous place oh, to yeah, run around yeah. and I didn't want to waste time and it's a big body of water you can waste a lot of time idling in and out of places and running around and uh, really spent a lot of my time you know looking for those areas that would hold fish and it seemed like the healthier vegetation was a big key whether it was you know big hyacinth mass or um, submerged vegetation that was kind of seemed to be holding the bait fish that was then holding you know a lot of the bass and they were set up in places that they were living you know they weren't transitioning they were actually living in a lot of those places but I mean you know I caught them a bunch of different ways that we could cut them. Yeah. Punching, cut them on a bladed jig, yeah. top waters, uh, you know, just a lot of, a lot of different things, a lot of fish on a jerk bait. And didn't that wind kind of sneak up on you? You didn't think you had any, any idea that you could after my for the title? Yeah, after my practice, I thought there's no way. I was just trying to, you know, get by, get some good points. And then day one, things kind of came together and that's, that's really how I practice anymore. I try to just find clues. I don't try to get dialed into any one thing. And then as the tournament rolls around, you figure out which clues are actually going to play yeah. out throughout the week. And then it's really, it's on those decisions. Final right? morning, you had a big clue too. Didn't you see a fish bust and go to it? And <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> no. Yeah, I've, I've had some really good fortune that happens like that. Gotta be there. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, we could see that today. Any one of these guys in this bracket. Louis Minetti, we saw him right there, still leading his match with Trey Schroeder, Carter Cart, Connor Cartmel, 
is down. He's got a deficit for Jackson Swisher and has had for a while. Those matches are continuing on here. We look on the other side of the brackets. Michael Figaro still stuck on two fish. Needs to put something together behind Tyler Christie and Seth Slanker leading Vereen. we got more to come. We'll be right back. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood brought to you live by Luz is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Striking College Bassmaster Series is all year long, all about teams, two man teams. They fish all of these tournaments, and for the first time, they are broken up as individuals now. Three two-man teams, actually four two-man teams. We're now fishing as individuals here in bracketed competition head-to-head -head out there. We're into our second half of the day. Here's Connor Cartmel. Still trailing Jackson Swisher, Florida Gateway. Oh, I saw that bite. Ooh. One seven. Is that an ounce? Huh? That's your call an ounce? Yep. Gave up. Oh, there you Gave him a whole ounce. Oh. 315 Seven. back, he needs to be gaining pounds. He needs one of those big five pounders. Yeah, he needs that big bite. He's throwing a bait, I've got a lot of big ones on. Louis Minetti lower right there has our second largest limit of the day, just under 10 pounds. Leading in his matchup with Trey Schroeder and McKendry. And our second biggest fish of the day. Yeah. We got a four pounder. It must have just instantly warmed up. Because everyone went from sweatshirts <laughs> and bibs <laughs> to right. now they're Popped all in their bit. jerseys. Like it before break everyone was bundled up and then came back and they're on their jerseys. Yeah, Schrader is Three pounds, cool. two ounces back of Manetti. And he catches one of those big ones, and he's right there. A lot of guys are one, two bites away. The Marine and Figaro do not have limits, though. They're the only ones with two fish. Everybody else has a limit. Louis Manetti, another one of our anglers who just graduated this spring, this past spring. Degree in marketing. UNC Charlotte. UNC Charlotte's a big school, 30,000 people. Jeez, 30,000 students, that's like... Little fella. It's almost North Idaho's entire population. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> He's getting marketing help with his baits <laughs> on his jersey. Not that's what we're looking stuff. for. See a lot of college kids going for marketing degrees now. Oh yeah, smart, huh? <laughs> Genius move. That's what I started to go to school for. I talked about the bait, but that fish was a little too embarrassing to try and. I just happened to not give finish an out. Giving that stick on. They didn't have uh, college fishing to keep me enticed to stay in college. I had to leave college to go fish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you took the the nation route. Worked out pretty good. Yeah, worked out great. This little dock looks good. He's trying to do a little bit of everything right now. 
Um, trying to figure out if there's anything consistent I need to try and really do for the rest of the day, or if it's just simple as Tyler Christie. Oh, well. Good news is I don't know if he even helped. The bad news is my hook really never got exposed there. Not to bite at least. He probably did help, being that my smallest one's a 1-1, one, one, but damn, that sucks. My hook, like, never really exposed. It was weird. I'm fishing. Not fishing very good today. Okay. Switching up areas, but <sighs> sticking with that shaky head. God. <sighs> Not fishing overly clean. All right, Brandon, the sun's popping out. Where do you go? What do you do now? I definitely try to find some type of cover, whether it's on the bank or off the bank, but, um, you know, it's going to be those docks looking for shade lines, lay downs. You know, we've seen some overhanging brush in a few places uh, or those offshore fish. It should start pushing, kind of congregating them into some of those brush piles where they're not going to feel as safe just roaming around with the oh, cloud yeah. cover. I mean, especially, I mean, losing fish is always frustrating. It's just like, it always feels like there's something else you could have done. There probably was there. Um, but, I mean, when they ain't that big, normally you can flip them in no problem. I just don't know if my hook didn't, my hook was pretty well in the bait when I got that fish, or when I got it back into the boat, so I don't know if it just never really exposed all that well. I just barely had him nicked, but it's alright. It's not a huge deal. That wasn't like a giant fish, but it seems like ounces are gonna count today. So, <sighs> well, fun fact: I do believe the the worm that um, Christie's throwing is the same worm that I caught. For, what was it? Seven twelve on at Santee. Oh, wow! In twenty twenty, really? yeah. Maybe the reason sitting he's around six pounds. <laughs> I mean, it could be. And I, and I think he was sitting at like five pounds, maybe four pounds for two. Something like that. So it's. <laughs> Something like that. That's why I need to find some more quality. Yeah. Yeah, that bite would have been. Pretty helpful. Well, again, Tyler fished this bracket competition four years ago when he was a freshman on Watts Bar in the Tennessee River. It was a pretty tough tournament, as I recall. TVA can be tough in the fall. Ooh. Well, this one, there's not a lot of knowledge on Lake Greenwood. They, they learned yeah. where they were going to fish about a month ago when they qualified, and then they could gather information that was uh, readily available to anybody online, and that was it. And there is not a lot out there on Lake Green. Yeah, public info only. Haven't been a lot of major events there, so it can be tougher to gather much tournament knowledge. Sometimes that's better off, though. Sometimes you end up uh, not not getting too much preconceived notions going into a body of water. You just, you fish it for the current conditions. And yeah. that can be important on a week like this where you have these abnormal, you know, you've got a hurricane that swings <laughs> through, you know, like abnormal conditions. Sometimes not having preconceived notions, you just end up fishing the conditions and you're better off that way. It looks like Minetti's seeing a few swim, swim around. He's fishing super shallow right now. They'll do that, those largemouth, even those bigger ones will get up this time of year and they'll just, they'll cruise those almost do nothing banks. Bluegill will get up there shallow, especially when the sun starts getting up.
long as we'll stay on right now. We're kind of thankful that Hurricane Ian didn't really inundate this area. I mean, it canceled one day, but they're able to fish and the water isn't blown out. So that's a really good thing. We'd, we do have our thoughts with all the people who are affected by it. My family, my brother had three foot of water in his house down in Fort Myers. Oh my gosh. So he's, he's had a big cleanup coming and oh they boy. don't have water yet or anything. Stand no with my, my sister. Our buddy Davey High told us uh, if, unless you get two days, if you get two days of rain on this lake, it will, the whole lake will, will get blown you know, much blown, much more blown out. But uh, yeah. just the one day, I'd say it's pretty good for two thirds of the lake, wouldn't you, Brandon? Oh, it looks phenomenal right now. We don't have any of our anglers way up the river to see what the water clarity looks like there. Mm -hmm. Curious to see tomorrow what ends up happening. Tomorrow's going to be a big day as well. Two big matches going on out there tomorrow with our four who advance from today. Who's that going to be? Can't say at this point. Minetti leading his matchup with Trey Schroeder. By the Nine way. Nine pounds and 15 ounces. Connor, Car Connor Cartmel still trailing Jackson Swisher. Having the best day of all of our eight out there. Mike Pagaro looking to make something big happen in the last few hours of this tournament. Uh, tournament day. Tyler Christie has a lead there. Andrew Vereen trailing Seth slankers so we got plenty more of our plot to unfold as we move through day one here at lake greenwood thanks very much very much looking forward to nascar race day right around the corner getting us ready for that nascar camping world truck series event later today in talladega meanwhile we got some more fishing to show you from here at this bassmaster college classic bracket action presented by lose live here let's take you back out on lake greenwood here in south carolina one of our matches in progress right now. Trey Schroeder going up against Lewis Minetti. Trey is trailing Minetti. Oh, needs a good one. He watched that one a bit. Three bites on that cast. Hey Trey, you're second over me now. Tell me about finishing third here in 2019. Um, that was a blast, man. I was really fishing, fishing my comfort zone then. I uh, that place had good good hydrilla and I was fishing a buzzbait shallow and that is my favorite way to catch them is with a buzzbait but yeah that was a true that was an opportunity of a lifetime there coat that was Cody Huff's week though man I'll tell you what that kick that dude caught 12 13 pounds a day which doesn't sound like a lot but on Watts bar early fall that was a good bag he beat he beat that whole field. And it shows. He's in the elites now. That dude can catch him. Yes, sir. Had a real good year. Official winter series down on Bull Shoals against him every year. He uh he likes to likes to whoop up on all of us. <laughs> I think Trey's grown up a little bit since Yeah, then. freshman on the left, senior <laughs> on the right. It's a big difference. Yeah, <laughs> Trey Schroeder back then. But he both 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 times he can fish, that's for sure. He wouldn't be here if he couldn't. Move over to one of our reigning national champions here. Bassmaster Andrew Barine. Well, Got slower. some work to do. Definitely does. A little slower start to his morning than he was expecting. Still plenty of time, though. Chanticleers won the College World Series in 2016. <laughs> there you go. You got <laughs> it. You got it there, Sue. There you go. 
Hey, oh, a little good. better than average. That's I told you about to catch us some large mouth. We hit it right at a boat too, boy. We should have at least one more then. Yeah. That's definitely Ooh. gonna help. More than double his weight. Mm-hmm. You mean take him off? No, they said just put his hand up. Tail down, he should settle down. Hmm. Boy, he hit it right at the boat. Three five. Three, I agree with you. Yeah, three five. Right. Good job, man. Mm, I appreciate that. Mm. We need about three more of them, and we'll be all right. Appreciate your cooperation there, buddy Row. Third biggest fish of the day. We're back in the game. Uh -huh. We're absolutely back in the game. And that's just fish number three for him, so he's got a lot of headroom there. He can, everything goes right to the bottom line for him. One. From here on out. 13 behind Seth Slanker of Florida. That'll help my cause. Yeah, he's he's nah. one, one bite or, or really if he finishes well, if out his every limit. Fish that bit today, we'll be working on a good bite. He's, he's right there. Slanker so. has not upgraded in quite some time. Even though it's been a tough day for him so far, he's not out of it to advance. Vereen, yeah. And you had uh, Jackson Swisher with a 4-2. Bruce Minetti with a 4-0. Angie Vereen with a 3-5. Makes three, it our five. third biggest one of the day. Probably a little confidence booster for him. Mm-hmm. Or momentum like, booster. Like you're saying, you figure out the clues. I mean, yeah. figured out a few with that fish. Yeah. He's still got plenty of time. And he's had a couple other big bites on that buzz bait today that he just hasn't been able to capitalize on. So I would not be surprised if we saw him stick with that for a little while longer. Michael Figaro switching it up, leaving his rock wall, doing some dog fishing. Yeah, you can't count him out yet. Absolutely could get something going. And make big things happen. We've seen big things today. Lots of fish catching today on Lake Greenwood. Yeah, okay, while these guys doing Different things, seeing jerk baits, top waters, drop shots. I mean, typical fall fishing, a lot of junk fishing, uh, there you go. especially One for eight. those bigger bites. You know, Coming doing a lot of different things. That's a keeper. A lot of spotted bass, but those large mouth, those four That's plus pounders. That's how you want to start off the morning. Like one. There's the biggest. All of these guys hoping to jump one of those big large mouth during the course of the day. That's the way you're going to be Let's able go, to advance. Baby. Yeah. See, among the four who are fishing tomorrow. Four for a shot in the final that's coming your way on Monday. Got tomorrow's action coming to you right here on FS1. Same time, 8 a.m. Eastern time. Can't wait to bring you that. That'll be two matches, and we will be on top of that for you all day long. Of course, Bassmaster.com. The action continues here. Definitely want to check that out. Taking you all the way to uh, very near the end of the day. Otherwise, we will see you right here on FS1 tomorrow at 8 a.m. Eastern Time for this classic, <clears throat> classic bracket action. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood brought to you live by Lose is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops.
Continuing our live coverage of this one-of-a-kind event, this Bassmaster Classic Bracket, presented by Lou's from Lake Greenwood in South Carolina. Lake Greenwood, about 20 miles long, 210 miles of shoreline, 11,000 plus acres, and in pretty good shape, uh, considering all the weather that's been through this part of the country in the past four days. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Sanders and Such here with you, with our special guest analyst, really special guest analyst, Brandon Polinick. And Brandon, we've seen some good fish catching today. Yeah, they have been catching them really well this morning, um, especially considering the conditions they've been dealt with. You know, big storms, like you said, coming through this area yesterday, uh, changing a lot. You know, a lot of these guys said they had wind, sunshine coming into during practice and stuff. And then dealing with changing conditions, they've adapted well and really caught them well this morning. You're just tuning in Let's with us, go, just getting baby. caught up on this. This uh, field consists of the top eight finishers for the season 2022 for the Strike King College Bass Master Series. Now they're competing as individuals. We have four separate bracket matchups head to head going on right now. Louis Minetti of uh, UNC Charlotte is leading by a slim margin over Trey Schroeder of uh, McKendry University. He's really Connor picked Cart it up. Yeah, Connor Cartmel is uh, still got his deficit to Jackson Swisher. Car Cartmel from Coastal Carolina. Swisher from uh, Florida Gateway. Mike Fugaro, Michael Fugaro from uh, also from UNC Charlotte is trailing Tyler Christie and has been pretty much all of the day so far. Not to say he can't turn that around. And our fourth match is Seth Slanker from uh, Florida Gateway with the lead over Andrew Vereen, who has uh, made up a lot of that deficit uh, in the last, let's say, hour and a half of fishing. Yeah, those Florida Gateway anglers, Jackson Swisher, he's got 11 pounds, 12 ounces on the day, and Seth Slanker, he's got 10, 13. He's from Florida Gateway. They're really excelling. Team-wise, they but We got them pretty early, pretty fast. Um, cold a couple times on just some smaller spotted bass. And then went up shallow and just about instantly caught a four-pound largemouth. Um, that was right before our midday break. Um, excuse my trolling motor. But uh, yeah, it was right before midday break and kind of just been doing the same thing since. Hit a couple points, just to see if I can catch a better spotted bass and it just has not happened. Been doing a lot of this. And I just, I don't know, can't, run, can't seem to run into a better one right now. Um, we still got, I think, two hours, so we got time to make something happen. But uh, we gotta do something a little different. We're gonna make a run here in just a couple seconds. I'm gonna fish this last dock. And then uh, we'll see if we can't run into some better ones. We need, I think we need another coal or two, depending on what the coal is. So we'll see. During the break, you spoke that you liked his poise, Brandon. I do. I, I he just has something about him that's kind of it's addicting to watch. I mean, he's very cool, calm, collected, confident, uh, confident, <laughs> but humble at the same time. Right? He he doesn't have any arrogance to him but he has that confidence that you need to perform well in this sport uh, and you know this is the first time that I've really got to watch him fish and it, I mean there's no doubt that this will not be the last that we see of him I mean right now he's leading his head-to-head -head matchup so I mean we could definitely see obviously more of him this week but I think even outside of this weekend We'll continue to see more of him. This match did tighten up, though. Trey uh, Schroeder yeah, from so McKendry is up to 8-11. It definitely uh, tightened up. Tire pile. Um, you know, and even and though I he doesn't see him on know it. the weight. I can see him on it now, but in practice, I never he, got him to bite. He so probably knows that it's none of my tightened up. Other piles were really going. So I came here to try and catch one and uh, caught like a two-something on a jig. Caught another one-pounder that didn't help and... Uh, Missed one on a hair jig. I would really like to have, but again, you just got to keep at it. And we'll get one. And Trey's really committed to offshore more than anyone else has today. Um, and I don't even know if we've really seen him go to the bank. Seems like he's fishing a lot of offshore points, brush piles catching a mix of spots and largemouth, catching them suspended and off the bottom. Trey about a pound and a quarter behind Louis Minetti at this point.
both great anglers, but only one of them is going to move on. Yeah. You can tell watching Trey's spent a lot mm -hmm. of time on the water. He gets anything near that bite he had in practice. Oh yeah, hooked into a seven pounder. Yeah, he catches that a seven pounder. That would be the difference. Trey was a high school All American back in 2016. Well, I, I think that's really cool. I, I was looking through some of their bios, and there were actually several of them, I believe, that were high school all yeah, American. A couple of, so it's couple of, yeah. the the stepping stones that Bassmaster has built is clearly working, right? Because they go from high school all Americans, then their success. You know, those kids that were successful no. then are then successful in college, and then you know a lot of them it, going on to the elites now. You're right. They, the, the system works. He skipped over the juniors, the little guys. You see them? Yeah, there. that's juniors. crazy seeing them. For me, when I was doing it, it was casting oh, kids is where you started. Well. I mean, a lot of the high school Americans are kids that do well in the juniors first. Be a little bigger for me. One pound, six ounces. There we go. Ounce at a time, I guess. <laughs> Anything helps right now. Head to head, it does not matter what you total, just as long as you beat your opponent. Tell us about your day so far and what you're looking at right now. Well, um, I think I'm just over seven pounds, which ain't a whole lot. Um, but I've just struggled to really get that big bite today. Um, pretty much the only consistent thing I can come up with at the moment is just skipping a shake yet under these docks. But um, I don't know, I feel like at any time you can get a pretty big large mouth up from under one of these. I've also haven't fished overly clean today either. I don't know if some of the fish I've missed or some of the ones I've lost were a little bit bigger, but i um, happy to have what I have right now. It's a little one. This has basically been the issue with my day. Is fish like that. I'm not too sure. I think um, in practice, I think, I mean, really, my bigger bites in practice came on a on a buzz bait way back, um, and I, I just haven't really gone on a buzz bait today. I've had, I think, two bites on it, missed them both. I don't quite know how big the one was, but. Um, and I don't think that that the offshore fish have really gone. At least for me, they haven't really shown themselves today, and I think that's just because of these overcast conditions. Um, but as of right now, we're getting bit, and it's kind of all I can ask for. Talk about Christy thinks he's underperforming today, but uh, his opponent, Michael Fugaro, underperforming. Yeah, looking well. for a few two pounders, really. I mean, I know the guys in the lead are. So far, up around 10 pounds. So they, uh, they've been catching. Not going the way I wanted it to. Had high hopes about that rock bank that I started on. I got two quick bites on it, and then I missed a few. But I was like, shouldn't affect me too bad. And I ran somewhere else to kind of let it cool down, and then came back right after our break at like 11, and didn't get a single bite. And then so kind of scrambled and came up here to, I don't even know where I'm at really, but the channel swung right next to these docks, so I was fishing them, hoping I could pick up one, and caught one like six inch spotted bass, and that was about it, so now I'm kind of just committed to skipping this wacky rig until, until we got to come in, but hopefully I can land a few, but starting to lose hope. We're only tournament fishing a couple years. To listen to him talk, his thought process is very solid. He seems pretty advanced. You know, for, <laughs> he said he's only been fishing for three years total. So yeah, just he's amazing. only got two fish in the live world, but his 
his thought process is spot on. Like him talking about, you know, looking at the map, seeing channel swing swing up against the docks and focusing on that. Like, that's exactly, you know, things that I would be looking for on a body of water this time of year. And for a guy that's only been fishing that short of time, he's really advanced in his thought process, yeah. you know, which, and I mean, to win team of the year, to make it to this, um, obviously he has a great thought process, natural ability. Give you another look at our brackets and how they're progressing. And this matchup between Connor Cartmel. Coastal Carolina, the reigning national champions, and Jackson Swisher. Cartmel got up to a good start, the fastest start of anyone in the first hour this morning, but it wasn't too long before Jackson Swisher was able to uh, overcome that. And now it's on Cartmel to make up the difference. He's from Chapin, South Carolina, not too far from here. Well, like I said already, I mean, we had a decent start this morning. Um, this afternoon, it's slowed down a little bit. Bites have been few and far between. I've had two lost opportunities. I lost two fish in the trees, but uh, we still got plenty of time left to get us a few more bites. Just got to keep our head down and put them in the boat. Biggest fish is, I don't even know how big it was, maybe two pounds. Yeah, 112, pushing two pounds. But uh, I don't even know, I caught on the spinner bait this morning. But uh Yeah, I just gotta keep my head down and get get a three or four pounder in the boat upgrade. How's it going, sir? Doing all right. <laughs> I don't know about that. Covering water. Connor's got to get something going here. He's got plenty of time to do it, uh, just under a couple of hours. Andrew Vereen, his teammate, Coastal Carolina, has a pretty good uh, deficit to Seth Slanker. Uh, Florida Gateway as it stands right now. Yeah, well, had we're a slow the, start today. When we were on the brakes, Lanker upgraded by two pounds. Yeah, Andrew made it a little bit of a comeback there when he caught that three five, well, and then two more good bites. Seth, I believe doing uh, what we're doing right now. with another good one. Opposite buzz bait. I can get the good bites, but it's just a matter of running into them. So we're just gonna try to cover a lot of water. Try to get a bite. I mean, we're sitting at like six pounds right now, so two more three pounders will look pretty good, but the problem is we got to catch for it. And so far, that has not been too easy. We've had some good bites today, but uh, this ain't put them in the book. He's four twelve back. They could stand a couple of two and a half pounders. Yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't He's only have on to, three fish, yeah. He doesn't have to have a crazy, crazy big bite, especially with only having three fish. Uh, you know, it's not like he catches a four pounder and only pulls up two pounds. Right. He catches a four pounder, it's worth four pounds. And he's definitely doing something that could yield that big bite. You can tell he's comfortable with a buzz bait in his hand. I think they got a little, little bit of a drizzle going on. They do, don't they? Yeah, break up that water surface a little. There's Seth Slinker. Florida Gateway. Probably been one of our most versatile anglers today of just it's, different techniques. It's going pretty slow for me today compared to practice. Um, I just need to keep catching those three pound plus fish that I, I just caught. I just caught one about three six. 
um, through five. If I can get several more of them, I'll be happy. Um, but it's been pretty slow for me today. I didn't get her on a really good morning bite. I caught a bunch of small ones, found found half fish, and um, I'm just lacking a few more quality bites. I think. Talking about how slow his day's been, but he's sitting second overall on yeah, bass track. How and, good was his and, practice? And, and, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, kind of what I was wondering. Like, man, practice, he must have had a pretty good practice. What? Leading his head-to-head matchup. He solved that mystery for us. He caught a 3-5 equaling Vereen for the third biggest oh, fish yeah. of the day. How he jumped up from like 8-12 when we left to 10-13. Uh, yeah, Vereen catches a 3-5 and he just answers a 3-5. A Glide with Seth Slanker right now. It's been awesome to see all these different guys how they approach the same body of water. You know, some of them switching up techniques on you know similar types of cover. Some of the guys sticking with the same technique but switching up the types of cover. You know, kind of doing the vice versa, and uh, it's neat to see both of them work. About an hour and 45 minutes left fishing time for all of our eight anglers and our four matches out there today. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. Of course, uh, Tommy Sanders, Mike Sukon here, but our, our star attraction is our analyst here, the reigning progressive <laughs> Bassmaster Angler of the Year, his second AOI win. Uh, Brandon Paul, Nick, and Brandon, um, talk about you'll be fishing your 12th yeah. classic yeah. coming up, uh, coming up uh, in 23, and it's never easy to make it. No. I mean, it's not. I mean, these guys have a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter how you qualify, right? Whether it's through the college bracket, through the elites, through the nation. Uh, I mean, every way that you get there is a difficult route in its own way. And and when you get there, you the hardest part is then not letting that overtake kind of your your performance, right? Because the classic is unlike any other event out there. The amount of media that goes behind it and you know all the fireworks and things like that and then just the pressure of how big of an event that is comes into play and yeah. you, you kind of have to try to subdue all that and press it down until uh, the event's over and really enjoy the moment but not uh you know not underperform as well well yeah, you see absolutely. all the a lot of the elite guys saying that is my goal get to the Bassmaster classic a lot of guys takes a lot to, to get on even a streak where two or three in a row, these guys have the chance in college to get there. It's just amazing. I want to ask you, first time you made it, Bass Nation, how big of an accomplishment did you it, feel? It was amazing. You know, and for me, the, I had been dreaming of that since I was an eight-year-old kid. Like that's, right. I knew at eight years old that this is what I wanted to do for a living. And I'm, I'm living that out, you know, as now a 34-year-old. Well <laughs> and so, um, you know, th these guys have that, same ability right just through a different route to live out that dream that they had since they were younger uh, and then it's just it's taking advantage of it when you get that opportunity that's what the sport's all about is when those opportunities arise take advantage of them make it happen well they all had to get past hundreds and hundreds of college anglers to get here here's the way they are shaping up right now at this point in our first day action Lewis Monetti with the lead not a very big lead over Trey Schroeder has certainly made up some some ground on him, Connor Cartmel. He's gonna have to catch Jackson Swisher. He has got our best limit of the day so far. Take a look at the other side. Michael Figaro's got plenty of work ahead of him. Tyler Christie, though, thinking he's not doing that well. And we got Andrew Vereen with a deficit to Seth Slanker. We just saw both of those anglers in the last 10 minutes here. Both of them making some progress, continuing throughout the day. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood brought to you live by Luz is sponsored by Minn Kota, Powerpole, Skeeter Boats, and 
by Rapala. Just over an hour and a half and it's lines out of the water. 3 p.m. local time there, Eastern time on Greenwood Lake in Greenwood, South Carolina, where the breeze has obviously kicked up a little bit. If that is a shot from today, it might not be. Might have been uh, laid down a little bit earlier. Otherwise, we have had great weather conditions today. Everything has been very, very manageable. Which out on the lake, there's the way our anglers are, eight, eight anglers are laid out on Lake Greenwood as it stands right now. Definitely a bias toward the lower end of the lake right here. But the farthest north is this man right here. And the biggest weight. Jackson Swisher, who is also This afternoon, it's been a little slower. Um, you know, in practice about this time, it, it got pretty slow for us, or for me. Um, but I'm still just doing the same thing. I bounced around on some new water, and uh, I caught a couple short, or couple fish didn't cull, but I'm right back in the same area where I caught that that four pounder earlier. So I'm hoping that uh, there's another another good one on this stretch because I, I caught one about that size in practice also right here. So just kind of running a lot of the same things that I was running earlier, just a little bit different uh, presentation for them. You know, after that rain, hoping now the sun's out, it'll put them right back where they need to be like they were earlier. It's actually, it's actually been pretty tough the last hour or so. Still throwing the same jig, everything. It's interesting to hear him talk about <clears throat> where getting back to the area where he caught his bigger largemouth, which is the biggest one we've seen today. And uh, kind of what I, I've seen in the past, um, you get in these kind Try of more highland reservoir type places. And when you get these influx populations of spotted bass, it seems like a lot of times the rivers end up becoming more of the largemouth players, oh. you know, the upper ends of the lakes that are maybe a little bit flatter, a little bit dirtier, that kind of feed to those largemouth tendencies more, where the lower end of the lake then gets kind of overpopulated with spotted bass. There's still some big largemouth, and a lot of times the biggest largemouth will live in the lower end with those spots, but your average, little bit bigger size ends up being in that upper end. And, you know, maybe the weather pushed some of these guys down, kept them from looking up there, and, uh, you know, maybe Jackson's found something that kind of is all to himself. You know, he's the furthest guy north, caught our biggest one of the day. And I, you know, from what I've seen in the past, it doesn't surprise me that that's what he's seeing. That, that's interesting, mm -hmm. Brandon. Davey Hyde said basically the same thing. He said, if I was gonna fish there, if I had the conditions right, I'd be up in those rivers. I'd be in the Reedy River, yeah. Saluda River, doing just what you mentioned, looking for the, the, the kind of work-a-day largemouth that yeah. live up there. Yeah, you're not gonna get as many bites, but your average is gonna be a little bit higher. And sometimes on these lower weight fisheries, you know, in the fall, even a great fishery, you're gonna see a lot of times the lowest weights of the year. And, you know, sometimes just having that pound and a half average instead of a pound and a quarter average mm -hmm. can be the difference makers. And then obviously putting yourself in contention go the new top to get one of those four pound bites. Sticking it out until a little flurry comes on. Uh, these guys have been battling it out. Connor hasn't had a bad day when you look at it, the overall field. He just happens to be matched up against the guy that's oh leading the overall the, field. The bad luck of the draw. Jackson Swisher, himself also a former high school All-American who, and once in a while you'll find one of these college anglers whose fish tried their skills in the open level. Yeah. Jackson Swisher has done that and had a good result. He, he, Finished yeah, top well. five, top six at Lake Douglas in an yeah. open last year in 2021. That's got to be great experience for oh, yeah. college. Oh, yeah. Great experience, yeah. great, uh, you know, kind of confidence builder that you can compete at that next level.
Connor no, has just not found that big large mouth yet today. That's what well, that would be the prescription he needs. Second seed, Michael Figaro having a having a tough time for the most part today. Tyler Christie. Well, he told us he didn't think his effort has been up to par either, but it's been Good enough There's so far. A bunch of fish in this area. I just got to stick them out, wait for them to bite. Trying to force feed them a little bit. Usually, what I was doing is I'd, you know, one or two casts max on a dock. Now I'm trying to, you know, pick it apart a little bit. That way. There's a fish. I can try and drag it right through his face and make him, make him bite. Figaro's just less than five pounds back on two fish. We've seen some miraculous comebacks late in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. These kind of competitions. I mean, really, that's, that's, that could be one bite. Yeah, well. When you've only got two one, fish. One, two, or three, yeah. It could be one and five pounder. I mean, obviously, they live in this place. Water's cleaned up a little bit from this morning, I think. It looks cleaner. I don't know. It's just, just maybe the sun's out now, but. interesting I think that was Jackson Swisher there talking about the water mm -hmm. cleaning up since this morning which is really interesting him being the furthest north angler where we should yeah. have the dirtiest yeah. water if if that water's already started clearing up I'd be curious to see if he continues to push further north up into the river more or what his game plan will be and like he said it could just be light penetration yeah. yeah right around near greenwood state park where we take off down down lake we had about a half an inch of rain yesterday further north i saw a couple spots where it's like eight tenths of an inch of rain uh, yeah. further up in the watershed where the uh, reedy and saluda rivers come in there but i mean that's not that horrible to you know brandon cobb was saying it'd take two to four inches and muddy the whole lake mm -hmm. up yeah yeah <coughs> different look from Tyler Christie than we've seen in a while. He's been spending most of his time fishing shallow. He fished off shore a little bit this morning. Couldn't get much going, but it looks like he's gone back out. He talked about that sun coming out, positioning those fish a little bit better. A lot of these guys, their thought process is spot on. on our other two matchups we've been following all day long. Trey Schroeder, Lewis Minetti. Minetti's still in charge if that one right there, but not by a whole lot. That one's definitely tightened up. Yeah. That's Slanker and Andrew Vereen on the right. When we were talking Vereen with only three fish. He's he's a little more than four pounds back, but he's not out of it no, by any no, means. No, you know, no. with not at all. Doesn't even have to have two giant fish, just two really solid ones, and he's right there. I need some shorts on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Myself to mention it every time I see a turtle. Can't give you a good reason. Oh. oh. Something swiped at it. Why are they not eating it? Lost the tail again. 
another thing I've seen on these Highland reservoirs big one, but where cool. those fish will position between the docks. Cool, you would think that they would only get underneath the docks, but there may be a, you know, a little rock point under the water or even a sand drop or one stump or something. Um, you know, it could be an old Christmas tree that someone yeah. threw out off their dock, but those fish will position between the docks, you know, not even necessarily on the docks. And uh, we've seen a couple of the guys catch fish, you know, between the docks yeah. like that. And um, especially in the fall, it seems like they'll just, they get there and I, I think it has to do with the way the herring move and the shad and they're just, it's almost in that, those openings, it's easier for them to fly out there, grab a bite to eat versus trying to maneuver through the docks and get on those bait fish. And interesting to see, you know, Minetti getting another buzz bait bite there, kind of in between yeah. the docks on what looks like a nothing bank. Mm. I guess these guys are all relating their day fishing to what they did in practice two days ago. Mm -hmm. He said, this is nothing like I experienced in practice. Yeah, different conditions. I mean, you had a major, major storm front move through, right? A, a hurricane, tropical storm when it reached them. We were pretty Doesn't fortunate it kept skirting to the east and really didn't dump as much rain as it could have. Yeah. Yeah, these guys could have. As the path was initially coming right over. Yeah, they could have been Greenwood. dealing with some yeah. pretty tough conditions. But they've been they've been making some good adjustments. Take another look at this uh, bracket battle right here between Connor Cartmel, Coastal, Coastal Carolina, and Florida Gateway College's Jackson Swisher, in which Jackson Swisher is, uh, well, he's done better than any of our eight anglers out there today, knocking on the door at 12 pounds. Switching it up to a spinning rod. I don't think he's going to go, but we're going to try him. Healthy spot. He's hooked right in the crusher. I don't think he's going to go, but we're going to try him anyway. 1 8. All right. <laughs> yeah, he thought he was big. That's three fish that come under that same dock. Caught a full pound runner earlier and I just caught the two small ones. Same dock he caught the four pounder on earlier. Oh yeah. 
what it looks like. It does look just like. Just caught that that fish. Caught the, that 4-2 earlier, the biggest fish we've seen today. Mm -hmm. Caught that one, I believe, on a bladed jig earlier. And then this is the first time we've seen him go finesse a little bit more. But obviously, that 4-2 gave him some confidence in this dock. And he said, I'm not going to just pass this one up. I'm going to switch it up, see if I can get another bite on it. And it paid off. Yeah. It's where they hang out. Yeah. Looks like he's throwing a Nico rig and see if that keeps playing up for him. Well, pretty simple proposition today. All you got to do is beat one guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seems can be simple. A little, yeah, <laughs> can be a little harder than it seems. Absolutely. We'll look at Manetti. The lead, not much of a lead over Trey Schroeder. That match is very, very close. Jackson Swisher and Connor Cartmel just looking at that one right there. It's still uh, Swisher with the upper hand. Christie over Figaro. Slanker over Vereen as we step away for just a moment and we will come right back. The Strike King Bassmaster College Series presented by Bass Pro Shops College Bracket at Lake Greenwood brought to you live by Luz is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha. Toyota. Berkeley. And by Progressive. Well, the fishing began at 7 a.m. local time, Eastern time this morning on Greenwood Lake in Greenwood, South Carolina for our eight anglers, our eight college anglers who have uh, overachieved, shall we say, over the year 2022 and qualified to fish here as individuals. Bracketed competition, all with the thought of winning the top prize, which is a, a trip to the Bassmaster Classic, not just to see the classic, but to, but to participate in the World Championship for Academy Sports and Outdoors. Bassmaster Classic coming up from uh, Knoxville, Tennessee in March of 2023. You can see our takeoff there at the State Park, and there are our anglers and where they're distributed up and down the lake so far today, and as they stand right now. Schroeder, Schroeder being the guy fishing the farthest down part of the lake. Here's Louis Minetti. <laughs> Screwed that one up. He's the second furthest north angler yep. that we have. Um, I don't feel like I'm ready to go in, <laughs> to be honest with you. Kind of having a good time. Um, you know, going through a little bit of a dry spell right now, but it's been a good, you know, a lot of bites throughout the day, more so when I was fishing offshore, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like I got to keep the pressure on. I don't know how Trey's doing, like I said earlier, but, um, I feel like I need another one or two. Um, I don't know. I feel like I need another solid coal or, or a couple. So I'm just kind of really pressing right now to make that happen. Um, really just locking this jug, this buzz bait and that jig in my hand. Um, I feel like that's going to be the best chance to get a two plus pounder. But it's weird, man. I've I've not seen. There's a little guy right there. Look at that guy. <laughs> um, I've not seen many fish between today or any fish between today and uh, my practice day in that like two to three pound range. It's been, you know, pound, pound and a halfers, and then it's been that four pounder. Um, so I, I don't know if there's just a lack of that size fish population in this place or what it is, but I could really use a couple of them right now. Um, and I feel like I'm doing what I need to do to get that bite. You know, I can go offshore. I got a couple places where I feel like maybe I can get a better bite, but I feel like that difference making bite's gonna come up here on the bank with a buzz bait in my hand. So really just gonna stick to it, kind of rotate when I see fit. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get that one more coal out of the way and move on to tomorrow. Louis Minetti, the number one seed, going against the number eight seed, Trey Schroeder, although seedings among these guys, it's like take a group of all stars and, and just <laughs> yeah. say one's the one and one's the eight. Our tightest match by far. Yeah, yeah. for sure the tightest. Time in the quarter. Both great anglers. Absolutely. 
and I do believe it's our battle of the barefoot bandits, both fishing barefoot <laughs> right, right now. Good point. I don't know if that's uh, part of Trey's strategy, knowing he was one angler that opted to know what he had the other guy had. Yeah, and is he wearing shoes? Yeah, maybe he knows Manetti doesn't wear shoes when he fishes, and so he decided he would try it since he knew he was behind. I don't know. That is Michael uh, Fugaro, so Louis Manetti's teammate, UNC. Your teammate or, or not? Team of the year. Uh, I wouldn't say I was, I'd be looking forward to face Louis because I have a pretty good feeling how that one would end, but it would be cool to go up against him in the long run, but I don't really want to have to face him because then that means one of us were to get eliminated and I either want him to stay in or both of us to stay in. first few years of a college angler going to the classic it wasn't even a bracketed competition it would be the 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 two members of the championship yeah. team fishing against each other yeah for a single day yeah the first year they had the teammates going against each other and they decided to try to switch that up with the top three teams and then brothers know, ended up fishing against yeah. each other <laughs> in the second round. yeah second year i'm very unsure neat to listen to Figaro talk about uh, Manetti and like you can just tell how much respect he has for him. Oh yeah. Well Manetti fished more than one year by himself. Oh really? Yeah without a partner till Figaro came along. Oh. So I guess Michael Figaro is the chosen one. Yeah. Well, he did mention earlier that uh, Lewis keeps his fishing circle pretty tight it sounded like and yeah. so i mean getting to the be, tightest yeah getting to be chosen into that i, yeah. I would yeah. assume that's a pretty big deal circle of trust of two yeah yeah it's a circle Keep trying to ask Davey Hyde, is there fishing secrets, tweaking a bait, whatever, that he keeps to himself? Is there, do you have certain things that you will never tell anybody? Uh, and what are they? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't really think I have anything that I just, I don't. And it's all out there now, the magazines, the shows, the. You know. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much information that, I mean, what I've learned is that, you know, there's things that you may not like divulge a hundred percent um but really anymore like i used to think that you had to like keep baits secret or things you know techniques secret but it a lot of times it's how you apply it that matters more than anything you know? your knowledge of play. i wonder that who mentors these guys i mean they got a coach they got their parents they got their their friends you know some people have learned by going to the tackle shop and just talking with yeah. experienced guys yeah and there's so much information on the internet i think i saw a stat the other day and this wasn't fishing information specifically but just talking about in general the public like how much information is out there from like the start of mankind to 2003 <laughs> we the amount of information that was out there in that amount in that period is now given to us almost every couple days sir you know the amount of yeah content that's out there and information my day's so been slow you're just real, constantly real gaining this new info the bites i'm getting are good but they're few and far between that, that's helping these younger that, anglers you oh, with that learning curve i don't know it's hard to come back from losing a good fish especially on a place like this yep. there's just not a ton of big bites to be found so Before when you get them the you're supposed internet, to make them count I haven't, I haven't really done go that. to a local tackle shop talk to somebody right. or buy a paper map um, <laughs> yeah. I mean paper maps were still a thing when I started fishing the elites and it wasn't that <laughs> long ago 
And, and sometimes, honestly, I still like a paper map from time to time just because it, you can get such a big surface area. That's right, yeah. Um, You're not limited to a tiny you know, screen. Either take that or get your Lake Master chart hooked up to a big TV screen so yeah. you can scroll around <laughs> yeah. and have a big area. But, yeah, that's you know, that's sometimes when you can see the entire body of water, it just gives you a better understanding of how that lake lays out, right? You can look and say, okay, you know, this lower end is much steeper and deeper and has, you know, deeper, more narrow pockets. The upper end yeah. may be flatter. And, um, sometimes when you're just real tight on a screen, it's hard to see that. And that's why, you know, running a little bit bigger electronics on your boat and stuff can be an advantage sometime of being able to get a little bit more detail with happen without having to be zoomed into such a tight area. Roland Martin, Martin told me he started his career learning how to read the big maps that his father would map out where they're going to put dams, like the Tom Bigby. He worked mm -hmm. on that as an engineer. And he, and he said he and his buddies could figure things out and, and fish an old house, abandoned house that was covered, and catch yeah. the big fish in the state and made names for themselves. You see where that got him. Yeah, and it, it wasn't like they could just drop a Google Earth waypoint and then transfer it to their graph back then. No. They had to look at landmarks and... Triangulate and all. Yeah. <laughs> we did an interview this week with Glenn Andrews, 91 years old, who was maybe the original bass fishing guru. Yep. This is when tournaments were starting, just starting, and guys like Bill Dance, they would, they would buy a couple of maps to a lake, mail him one, call him up and he would go over <laughs> really? he, he would mark the map up and, yeah. and then they would go over it over the phone and get these all spots the all picked out wow. is that not end, something um, yeah wow. that wasn't that wasn't over their cell phone that was over, no, 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 that's that was over a, a pay phone or that yeah. was a phone there, connected to the wall I wouldn't exactly facing so one of us has more of a chance you know um i'd like to wait and face him at the end of, if it comes down to that Anchor and his Florida Gateway teammate, Jackson Swisher. Two best weights of the day? Yeah. Huh. No. Can't call it yet because plenty of fish catching time. Yeah, they got a little more than an hour left to go to fishing. Brandon knows you can catch an important fish in the final half hour. In the final <laughs> minutes. Yeah. I want to say I've won more tournaments on my last cast than I have my first cast. Scott Canterbury told me he wanted to finish the day as good as you started the morning. Yep. Keep your concentration up, keep your cast numbers in, in a good spot to catch fish. So that's probably a pretty good rule. To you, you go by to, yeah you have to i mean you just never know so I, i'm i probably hold the record for being the last guy in to check in I've, i'm always the last guy to check in i i've probably used that uh that minute grace period more than anybody else you know if you got to check in at three o'clock you have till three point zero five nine <laughs> i do that <laughs> i bet you got often. some competition you just come about right every up time, at that though. last second yeah. huh? oh, i will just i i just can't leave anything out there and so i'm always pushing it you know it it doesn't take long The thing is with a, a multi-day event, even if you don't catch a fish that helps you that day, in those last couple minutes, you may get a clue that then mm. keys you in to the next day where you can make a big move. You know, So it's not always about necessarily catching a fish that helps you that day, but it could be a clue where you, you find a group of fish that you don't have time to get to bite, but then you know they're there for day number two.
Do you always have a little something tucked away close to the check-in? I always try to. I always try to have like at least an idea of what's laid out there, so I can run. Or you know, if I I get something going, like I'm fishing these you know secondary points, I'll look on my way back to and yeah. look at my map and see what kind of sets up similar. Or if I'm fishing docks and you know figure out which docks are close. Or try to have something. You know, sometimes it be a little brush pile out in front of the boat ramp or. Yeah. different things but I was something that's very precise where you can just roll up and it, it's an exact cast you know that's typically what I like to do because that's where you're gonna be the most efficient I can pull up drop the old Trex look there it is on my mega 360 make that cast and, uh, and you're not wasting time so yeah. when you do have two minutes you're making the most of that two minutes get out of there and head back to check yeah, in make with it 15 back. seconds to go <laughs> huh? yeah yeah or, Point five second to go. Well, we are coming very close to the end of our allotted time here for coverage. They're going to fish for another hour here. You can keep up with the results up to date right here at Bassmaster.com. Don't worry about that. And of course, be plenty more coverage coming your way right here. So uh, we'll stick around, and check it out from time to time as we go up till three o'clock with lines out of the water. Six limits, a couple big four pounders today. Yeah, man. Good competition. Catching, catching them good. Hey, special thanks to our, our guest analyst, yeah. Brandon Polnick. It's been great. Your, your, you. your insights are invaluable. We, we <laughs> appreciate you. every bit of it. And the, the jokes, uh, you know, are yeah. pretty much landed. Yeah. Hey, I, I, I appreciate it. I'm yeah. looking forward to uh, seeing how this last hour shakes up. Yeah. We're going to be checking Bass Track on Bassmaster.com, watching along. and. Seeing what happens, you know, there's a couple of tight races that I'm looking forward to seeing how those shake up and then uh, looking forward to being back there again tomorrow. It's fun watching these guys. Yeah. I think I agree, Suits would agree with us that uh, we, we hate to see four of them leave. I know. Because they're all yeah, interesting. They've all got a great, great story. But tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern time, Brandon will be back. All the rest of us will be back. And four anglers will be back to square off in two matches going on uh, during that day tomorrow. And, anticipation of championship Monday so we will see you at 8 a.m. on FS1 and the coverage continues afterwards right here on Bassmaster.com.